Black button. There's a lot of gender. Saturday, you know, the weather's beautiful. And then we show up and ruin it. And then you motherfuckers come into my house and you fucking. Can't say the word the fuck on your on your feet. Uh, yeah, don't videos, fucking curse. The videos have to be fucking friendly to eighteen minus. The FCC's <laughs> uh, curse word bear demonetized. <laughs> poopy, you got to use poopy. Yeah. yeah right. oh, bullshit. Ah, uh, jeez. <laughs> call the shit poop. Let's see. Speaking of shit poop, hey, look, the other scoople. Here's the yeah, here's the city of the, 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 the city of Philadelphia sewage system is okay. front and center on this. Uh, let's see. Which is strange. Well, if it if you guys made it through the obligatory advertisements at the beginning of this video, and you are listening to us now, I would like to welcome you in to. All right, it's working. Yeah. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, welcome to part two of our in-depth look at Philadelphia roads, bridges, Woo! and everything else. Um, part one of this two-part series is linked in the description below if you missed that. We will not be talking about the city of Philadelphia itself tonight. That was covered in part one. Um, these two are intended to be viewed in tandem with each other, so um, well, you could do that too probably be more efficient um but so tonight we're going to be focusing on new jersey and we'll also be talking about the bridges of the delaware river as well and that'll pretty much round out our meat preview series for you guys so we'll see you on august 20th august yeah you know it's it's not what six weeks away now yeah. Yeah. good lord i remember you know when i announced this meet it was like Nine months ago, this is I was like, "This is really pregnancy for you." Yeah, yeah you know, I'm. I feel myself getting bigger actually as, as, as I as I travel yeah. more and more. Um, but yeah, no, time flies, right? You know, it'll be here before you know it. Um, so, yeah, who's yeah. who's here in my living room tonight? I've just got. You. It's is it just me? Yeah, okay. yeah you were yeah, all talking to your imagination. Talk, we're not yeah. actually there. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, so. We got we got the New Jersey crowd here tonight. Fitting. Wait a enough. minute, I resemble that. Well, well, and I resent that. <laughs> well, I resent it. Yeah, we got. Well, the, we got we got New the Jersey we got sport. three of the main New Jersey suspects here with uh, Steve and with Bill and with Jeff. Steve is with AlpsRoads.net. That is. Roads with an S. Yeah. I'm turning off my air conditioner so that gets rid of some of the background noise. Um, Connor is here from New Hampshire. Good evening to you. Hello. CPZ is joining us from Maryland, the land of Shapilov. Yeah, well, I said across it on the other side of Eastern Avenue, but that's yeah. that close enough. Close enough, yeah. And um, you, sir, have not been with us for a live show before. But not in house, no. It's, it's good to have you with us. Thank Rob you. is joining us of uh, Rob Casting Radio and WGCH Radio in Connecticut. Good to have you. Thank you. Um, and so we're going to try to make some sense of the New Jersey side of Philadelphia Metro tonight. Um, this episode is going to roughly mirror the kind of stuff that you can expect to see on day two of Meat Weekend, which is the Sunday. Um, part one was geared more towards the stuff that you will see on the Saturday. So depending on which day of the meet you're expecting to attend, um this show or the other show or maybe both shows will be geared towards you as uh, as far as getting you ready for meet weekend and all the stuff that you can expect to encounter on the way what kind of meat will we have first kid well, Ooh, well, okay. you know that's you know philadelphia has a lot of interesting yeah. stuff to offer you know I listen. I listen on Saturday mornings to the Howard Eskin show on WIP, and he does that weekly uh, hundred dollar De Bruno <laughs> Brothers giveaway. I'm with Jeff. I'm shaking my head. <laughs> <sighs> if we're talking meat, and it's yeah, Jersey. Right. Shouldn't this be kind of a so you guys can uh, either listen to Eskin. It's Taylor. Thank you for saying Taylor. It, you know, it, yeah, it's Taylor. It's it's on. You know. Oh, pork roll. 
I, I don't know what. What I, is it? We're talking that? about the uh, brand name, right? We don't know what that is. Yeah, we pepperoni don't know. roll. That's I'm okay with. That's yeah. Anyway, funny. definitely when you're in the Philly area, definitely get a pork roll sandwich. And, uh, no, you have to get Taylor ham before you get. Oh, uh, the they Philly. don't serve that down there. Yeah, you have to get it up where where it belongs in North Jersey, and then go down to Philly. <laughs> I mean, well, the, the uh, New York jersey. Uh, meat. I, mean, I was going to say the Taylor Ham is sitting right here. I mean, if you oh. want to say something to him. Oh, you know. that's true. <laughs> <laughs> well done. No. <laughs> Taylor, Taylor and last name only. Uh huh. You're such a ham. Ooh, yes. I know that sign is where I lost my camera case. Huh. Which one? On the right. On the right. <laughs> is it still there? Did you I took it? it out. I was there at night. I took it out, Ooh. take the photo, and this was this was a decade plus ago. Oh, okay. Yep. See that white fence in the background there? There's a really good Christmas light display right at that uh, white fence there. Did on the uh, on the, the oh on that tree there. Yeah. How so would that you might know? Be the, uh, yeah, it's happening. Uh, uh, All right. Well, I, I, I search around for Christmas uh, lights. So it's not just your place that has them. No, no. There, there's a bunch of others around. Very interesting. Actually, since, hey. since uh, he's busy, real quick, um, right on the other side of that overpass there, that's an overpass for a uh, train train bridge. There's is, a new is that 76C there, or is that actually 76 itself? That's 76. Yeah, okay, so that's, that's west of that injury. No, um, so on the left side, you know, right. that little overpass there, that's a train overpass. Yes, yes. So there's a new interchange on uh, Route 44 down there, leading to a... Um, oh, yes, yes. Yeah, leading to a... Uh, uh, plant, I think, right by the Yeah, they, they, they extended the part of 130 that had interchanges as opposed to intersections a little bit. They widened 130 south of the freeway for a little bit. Unless, uh, am I in a different place? No, that's a different place. Oh. This is Route 44 going into Gibbstown. <laughs> I'm thinking of the south end of 44, or past the south end of 44. So, okay. Yeah, no, different that's... Issue. Yeah, sorry, we were, we, were just, we were just interrupted by the pizza delivery person, so there's... Hey, there's everyone listening can come get some pizza. Yeah, if you know where I live, there's there's pizza on my dining room table if you mm-hmm. want to come over and grab a slice. Um, we're on the announcement slide, so... We're Paul Report, that's what I was thinking of. Let's see here. Um, I have actually been pretty active on the Gribble Nation blog lately, mm-hmm. publishing some articles about in-progress construction topics um the nice middleton bridge on the potomac river is was the subject of one of my uh, recent posts also there's a project in lynchburg virginia that's underway that i wrote a post about is there a road meet about that um well you know within the last month there's been a lot happening in lynchburg you know you know that's it's happened in place as far as YouTube is concerned, I've started a new series on Kansas and Missouri. This is material from September of last year. Oh, wow. um, I think I'm working my way through the Kansas Turnpike as we speak, so that'll keep me busy for a little while. Um, and, you know, I love my toll roads. What can I say? Yeah, I've noticed you know, that. They, they, <laughs> I, somebody, you know, somebody has to drive them because I know you guys won't. So well, I, I'm the only Jew in the room, so I, I know. Yeah, he's, he's well, really the only one that's opposed to toll roads here. Well, I don't know. Anyway, I actually willingly drove almost the entire Pennsylvania Turnpike three weeks ago. No kidding. Have you never driven it before? I'm actually still missing most of it east of Harrisburg. Wow, that's not too much of that. So it's only well, another couple hundred dollars. But I. I, mean, I don't think know, it's the price of the price yet, I'm not paycheck. looking forward to it posting. No, it's that, that's a nice shock. When that You're going to have to work some yeah. overtime next week. <laughs> <laughs> Does VHP pay overtime? Yes. Oh, they do? Wow, yeah. cool. Yeah. Anyway, um, meet week, weekend update. I think that pretty much everything has been settled as far as restaurants, for each day, and also you guys know about the ball game at the end of Saturday. And Sunday, I don't think I'm doing anything formal after day two, although we'll kind of see what people want to do. Maybe we'll do something impromptu after that. The two pre-meet events for Saturday and Sunday are fixed. Oh. Um, Saturday morning's walking tour will be on the Schuylkill Banks Trail at Center City, and Sunday morning's walking tour will be at the Maniunk Bridge Trail in uh, West Philly. But so, so Sunday's meet will be in New Jersey. Well, yeah, but I there, I couldn't really find anything in Jersey that I really liked, and plus the Besides diner on me? <laughs> with your, yeah. and sometimes this guy. 
He just wanted to make everybody yeah. have to pay a total yeah. again. Yeah. Well, you know. But, yeah. um... <clears throat> well, the That's diner for good. Sunday is also in Philly, too, so... Ooh. Yeah. Those fight words. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think you'll like the place. This is why I'm going to sleep at my house. Well, I th- you know, you... S- no you yeah. <laughs> You sleep wherever the hell you want. That's not my business. Um, If you were with us for part one, you saw us discuss the SS United States ocean liner docked in South Philadelphia. Um, I would like to talk about, in this episode, the battleship USS New Jersey, which is anchored in the waterfront in Camden, New Jersey. Uh, the New Jersey battleship was commissioned in 1943. It was part of the Iowa class of battleships, part of the class of the largest battleship to be constructed by the United States Navy. Uh, she was commissioned in 1943. As I said, she served valiantly in the Pacific theater of World War II. She also served in the Korean War and parts of the Vietnam War as well. She was active as late as the mid-1980s, I believe, before she was finally decommissioned, and she's been brought here to the Camden waterfront as a museum ship in the purpose that she serves today. Her sister, the Iowa, is in uh, San Pedro, California. Yes, the Iowa is there. The Wisconsin is in Norfolk, Virginia, and what is the fourth? The Missouri is in Pearl Harbor. Mm Mm-hmm. So those are the four. And, and by the way, if I, if I may throw this out there, even though the New Jersey is very much a carbon copy of the other three, the Missouri is definitely worth the trip to Pearl Harbor to go see. Among other reasons to go to Pearl Harbor. Well, yes, but you know, Missouri is also very significant in that it's where the mm-hmm. it's the ship where the Japanese surrender was signed and all that. Right. So it, it's a very special ship in our history. Very many reasons to go to Hawaii. And Pearl Harbor is one of them. I would put, you know, as a road enthusiast, I would put Pearl Harbor at the top of the list, to be mm-hmm. honest with you. I think Most it's... Most of what I saw I there was newer signs versus on the freeway had the button coffee. But, yeah, but I would say in terms of American history and significance, I would put this Pearl Harbor a road video, video, not an America video. Well, you, you know, we are, we are in the United States of America, so... We are? We we're, like, we're stuck yeah. here. It doesn't mean we want to be here. Camden was actually very lucky to get the ship too. Uh, there's a, at least one, maybe two other cities and areas that wanted the ship. Uh, and I, I forget the history. It's been quite a while. Camden needed day. a second nice thing besides the the state. The, the Tweeter Center. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, what? Where were they? So uh, they have three things. Yeah. Well, where were they looking to put the uh, New Jersey other than Camden? Up north, because everyone, everything like is in, up north. Like in Jersey City. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. I, I forget exactly where I, I... Like I said, I forget the history, but... The yeah. Delaware River's only navigable up so far. Maybe Trenton? Is it... I think, uh, uh, Route 1. Yeah, I think you Route could, 1 or the Amtrak Bridge. I mean, yeah, you can't... Other, you can't, you right can't, right can't right actually right. get to Canada. Yeah, but you could have gotten the, the, the New Jersey. Like, there's a service area on 295 just south of Trenton. Maybe it could have connected to that. Yeah, the overlook. The scenic overlook. It could have, be, it could have become something bigger, potentially. Yeah. yeah that would yeah. be my thought. Yeah. So she's there, and if you happen to be in Philly and you're interested in U.S. naval history, she's definitely worth uh, a visit. We'll go into, I assume we'll go Unlike into the SS United States, States, you can actually get on this ship and mm-hmm. take a tour of it. Mm-hmm. So. I'll assume during the course of today's presentation we'll go into why you want to see Camden besides that. It's, I mean, that's possible. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know why you want to, but okay. You will find out. <laughs> Um, so we kind of went over the history of the Philadelphia area, uh, with the old maps and all that in the part one of this presentation, so we won't go through that again this time, but, uh, we'll show you kind of an overview of the freeway system as it stands today. We have the three bridges over, the three freeway bridges over the Delaware River connecting New Jersey with the city itself, and again, we'll be focusing more on the New Jersey side of things. Uh, this evening. So anything that you are looking for information on that we don't cover from Philadelphia County and the Pennsylvania suburbs and all that, you can refer back to part one uh, of our series and I'm sure you will get every single one of your questions answered, uh, you know, in that episode as well. Do you want a slice? Uh, I'm good for now. All right. I'm good for now. 
looking out for you. No, I appreciate that. Somebody asked. <laughs> yeah, if you want to eat, just raise your hand. Man. Yeah. I'll, I'll just make Steve or Rob do it. You know? <laughs> Rob's got... We'll, Rob, adva- we'll advance your slides and just talk. Rob has here. the play-by-play chops. He can do it. You know? <laughs> You have a little experience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, your fans love Steve, so it's, you know. Aww. Well, I can think of no better place to start if we're going to talk about New Jersey roads and Philly metro than to talk about the turnpike. Yay. And uh, I am very fortunate to have somebody who, if in this room tonight, who if you told him to talk about the turnpike, he would not shut up probably for 12 hours, and that is Steve. <laughs> um, Depend, depends if you're employed as a civil engineer or not. Well... Steve, what would you like to say about the turnpike? My employer would like me to not say anything at all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's because you're you're you kind of have some inside information that I won't make you share here, but um, I can go into little bits and pieces as we go here. No worries. It is kind of the main street of New Jersey. It connects yeah. the Delaware Memorial Bridge with the George Washington Bridge and the New York Metro. Um, Designed in the days after World War II, it was really state-of-the-art for its day in the late 1940s. And even to this day, it it maintains a sort of modern appearance to it. Um, It certainly has kept up with the times over the last six or seven decades. Um, The section of the pike between, say, Interchange 1 and 4 has not really been modified all that much as far as traffic is concerned. Traffic capacity is concerned. I will note that Interchange 1 is the mainline toll plaza at the south end. Yes, we should. There is no actually signed exit 1 at all. Right. There is an unnumbered exit down there, though. Yes. Yes. But it is not exit 1. Right. Yeah. Because it's south of the toll plaza, (laughs) they don't care at all that it's numbered. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Right. The exit 1 is actually on 295 there. There isn't, yeah, the exit, right. The quote unquote exit 1 is for. That is true. Yeah. Um. So that southernmost 40 miles or so, 30 less, or 40 less, miles, yeah. um, really has not been touched as far as widening. It's the only section of the pike that has not been widened over False. the years. Westerly has never been widened. The what now? The westerly alignment through Chicago Small, once they built it. Oh, the Western East. Spur. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's westerly aligned. Well, I'm counting that as widening because that's the new spur that they built. Like, the Eastern Spur is the original. But All right. you see what I'm saying? Like the Western Spur is there, kind of—I mean, it's a new road, but it's, it's newer. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's but that not, the Newark Bay Hudson County extension would be the other significant piece that has not been widened since it was built. Well, until next week. <laughs> a little later than that. <laughs> um, S- supposedly, also the a lot of the asphalt below the below the subgrade, and Steve can correct me if I'm wrong from. Exit one to exit four is the original late forties, early fifties blacktop that's never been never been dug up and replaced ever. Well, what happened with the turnpike is they went twenty something inches of asphalt. Yeah. Whereas most roads are two inches of top, two inches of the next intermediate, maybe five inches of base, and everything else below that is gravel. So you're lucky if you have ten inches of asphalt. So when they have twenty something. Mm. Yeah, you, you may have to mill it six inches and put down six inches of new, yeah. but that still leaves 18 solid yeah. inches underneath that they, they don't touch. That's very I have impressive. no doubt in my mind that there's original asphalt all over the place on the turnpike. Mm. Very impressive. And yeah, I've very, this very, up once in a while on the uh, chats and whatever. I used to work the uh, tolls on Interchange 1 and Interchange 3 at the turnpike. Did that three, three and a half years or so. I'm sure you've got some good stories. It's interesting who you travel along with. <laughs> As Rob Sargent would yeah. say, the New Jersey Parkway and the Garden State Turnpike. Were that's, that's right, yeah. Uh, hey, what state am I in? Well, here's a hint. You're on the New Jersey Turnpike. No, no, I didn't ask the road. I asked what state I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and, and then the best Robert Sargent story for the Turnpike that I heard uh, when he worked as a call taker for the Turnpike Authority was, I'm broken down on the, on this, on this Turnpike. And he said, what are you near? Oh, I'm near the Sunoco Station. Said, which Sunoco station? <laughs> so the one that's across the road here. I said, where is here? And he said, and then he said, let's try let's try this. Show me, tell me if you see a small green sign on the right side of the road that has some numbers on it. And if you could read those numbers to me, please, I can figure out where you are. And this apparently took some time to understand. I can't see anything. Oh yeah, there's one. And I said, okay, read those numbers to me carefully. 
and then we can send you some help. <laughs> and apparently that that he that 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 approach finally worked. Oh, he he had people at mile four four hundred because <laughs> no one knows how mile markers work. Yeah. No, that's true. Yeah. I believe that. <laughs> That, that was that was, and then of course there was the one who wanted to send. A, you can't call the turnpike. You can't on the turnpike if you break down. You have to call the turnpike's choice of tow contractors, not your brother-in-law's tow company, which is free. I have dealt with this, yes. And uh, he dealt with that a lot because he would sometimes get phone calls. From people say, "Well, I'm waiting for for my brother-in-law to come here." Says, "Well, he can't tow from there. You have to wait for." Contract tower that works yeah. for the turnpike. That upsets authority. a lot of people. Yes, it yep. does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there are rumblings as far as potential future projects involving widening of the pike between exits one and four. That is the last section of the mainline pike that is less than six lanes. Um, I don't know. Should we leave it at that? Besides the westerly alignment, which is depending on how you define mainline. But the, the, we're not talking about the western spur. Well, you, well, you said to... less than you said four lanes, and that's four lanes in the northern section. Well, I, I consider the eastern spur to be a mainline, and I think that FHWA does as well, don't they? Wasn't that where they're going to stick I ninety five when they do the the exit numbering changes? All right. Listen. Well, not, we, 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 <laughs> I, I know Steve can't say anything, but me, just uh, Mr. Joe Public can say, you know, a lot of times uh, traffic moves fine between interchanges four and one. You see a little slowing down, especially southbound on weekdays, especially pre-COVID. Especially but between the, four and three. Yeah, yeah. Because going to Philly, those are your two interchanges. Yeah, and just, you know, commute, commute traffic going home uh, through the uh, Burlington County, uh, Gloucester County area. But the weekends, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, there is some uh, some congestion that forms down in that area. So yeah. a widening certainly is needed. We understand. There was a long well, queue this morning. It, no, I, I can say that I understand. <laughs> <laughs> it's into consideration okay. when we <laughs> You know, I have this guy on to talk about, you know, the turnpike because of his turnpike expertise, but then he can't say anything because he's, you know. <laughs> exactly. It's like, you really? have to hear, you yeah. have, what, as soon as you say this is over, then you'll hear everything I've been holding back. <laughs> well, listen, <laughs> I've, I've, I've heard plenty of what you've been holding back already, oh, so. Yeah. All you have to do is say, in my opinion, right? That, that makes no. it illegal. No, no that's not allowed well, to have an opinion. Really? No, really? He, he, I, I can relate really? to this. He's he is, he was, <clears throat> I, yeah. even though I don't work for a consultant as esteemed as he is, like Steve does. It's still I, I know this business well, and that's oh. a problem. <laughs> this is a, this is a good visual though. Let's talk about. This. You want to talk about the turnpike uh, dual roadway setup or whatever you want to call Relatively it? Relatively recent. Yeah, the at least down this way it is. Yeah, with the widens most. from three lanes to six lanes, just like that, and then yep. southbound. Six merges together, left lanes merge, right lanes merge, central lanes merge, one by one. It is, it is a very orderly merge, mm -hmm. you know, how much they more, did it. Going much more than pre-widening. Pre-widening south of Interchange yeah. 8 was a total crap show in terms of <laughs> yeah. what uh, people did. Now I remember from, that very well. Yeah. Because this is much further south after what's now a continuous I-95, is a very orderly merge mm -hmm. that does not cause issues. Yeah. And there isn't a service plaza three quarters of a mile south. <laughs> well, that's not, well, that's true too. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah, well, that was just in there for fun, you know, <laughs> <laughs> just to make things interesting. That's like when I drove here today. It's very much a if there's a lane on the right, use it, no matter how short it is or what it's for. Use yeah. it. Exactly. That's what that was. That was my the story of my drive. Too. If there's pain, if everyone went use for it. it. Yep. So when the, the, the turnpike system was developed in the late 40s and early 50s, it was automatically assumed that a spur off of the main line would be built in order to connect with the east-west Pennsylvania turnpike. Uh, and so the short Pennsylvania extension was built in the mid to late 1950s to accommodate this direct connection. Um, the interchange for US 130 in Florence Township was added in the 1990s. It is not original what? to the turnpike. Was there, was a partial ramp, there was a ramp or two there. Uh, there might have been a slip ramp somewhere, yeah. but not a full interchange. But 6A has been there a lot longer than the current interchange. Mm. The original, the okay. original ramps were there for. Why? Why is why is 6A not signed as 6A? Because it's not a toll plaza. Okay. I think that the Part toll is, the toll plaza is considered 6A, isn't the it? The toll plaza right. is coming on, because coming off is free. They don't need to sign it as 6A. 
it's, inv- it's involved. Yeah. Well, isn't it kind of similar to why there's no why the exit for US forty isn't signed on the main line? Because there's no toll plaza for the exit. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's this that that would it's the same reason. Okay. Um. Let's see. So this never it wasn't really clear if this had an interstate designation for the longest time. Um, Two seventy six always ended at the Pennsylvania state. Line. It always ended at the state line. Yeah. Right. Um. The direct connect interchange project that was completed in 2018 between I-95 and the main line of the Pennsylvania Turnpike enabled the I-95 designation to run along this stretch, uh, therefore completing the interstate. So now you don't have that weird uh, disappearance of the freeway around uh, Trenton anymore. Um, So it's been signed as I-95 ever since the completion of that project. That's it up up in this area here. This is your NJTA jurisdictional map minus the interchanges. Hmm. Um. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. It's there. They replaced all the signs, so it's not as interesting as it used to be. Well, you still have the turnpike arrow on the bottom yes. right there. You do. That's for yeah. the previous generation of sign replacements. If they replaced it now, it would be very much the standard arrow. Right. Because I think a lot of the signs in the six to eight range were under the previous generation. Like they got yes. it in six right to nine was the that. last. Yeah, right before they switched to the modern. Day. And this looks like to the Pennsylvania Turnpike extension eastbound. I'm assuming based on ninety five being left. Uh, right. You are correct. Yeah. So yeah, that that would all have been part of the six to nine signing, and that's why the old arrows on there. Yeah. So I just yeah. I literally just dealt with a another consultant who was doing just concept level signs and showed the old arrow and I had to tell him no you have to use the modern arrow now even for the concept level because you don't want to letting us down Steve you don't want to influence people let me put it this let me put it this way for those listening on the phone even if or even though I may like that arrow if I didn't say that the next designer to get that project would have said, we can't do it that way. It would never have made it all the way through no matter what. Right, right. So I caught it before it became a problem. Right. That doesn't mean we have to like it. Well, yeah, that's, that's we between don't. you and the Turnpike Authority then. Go write them a letter and see what happens. I'll go, answer yeah, go write them a, well. go write them a, yeah. Oh. Each one of us will send them a strongly worded email. Strongly worded. I'm going to give you zero I stars if I could. Me. I want that error back. I guarantee, I guarantee you they'll come to me at some point. So. We repeat, boom. Are you the official road geek answer at the Turnpike Authority? These are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. We talked about toll roads. Let's talk about the freeway that more or less parallels the Turnpike, and that is 295, which, of course, is a very popular shun piking yep. route for people. Look at that, Brian. Right. Yeah, so yeah, <laughs> some of the room. Yeah, clearly there was a snowstorm on the way in the lower right. <coughs> um, so I, I, I forget what year that was taken in, but that is one of my pictures. Um, really current. Yeah, it, it's relatively close. You have the widening for the for your third bullet. So yeah, well, there's um, no ramp there for the missing news. Yeah, this is at least a couple years old, but I have not been down there since I started. It. Wait, you know, you're really missing out. You should really go check it we out. Should, we should have that as part of the upcoming Phil yeah, I agree with you. Right. I'll see if I can squeeze it in on Sunday. What do All you right. think? Okay. Um, so the freeway through here was initially part of the relocated US-130 corridor. Um, there, were, there were multiple different bypasses of 130 that were planned. And then eventually the idea came about, well, let's just connect all the bypasses and make a separate full freeway corridor. And then let's go a step further and apply the interstate system to it. And so that's ultimately what happened here. Um, So 295 runs up from the Delaware Memorial Bridge, kind of shadowing the New Jersey Turnpike the whole way up to Trenton. And then it does that whole fish hook turn that is again, a product of the relocation of I-95 with the direct connect interchange completion. Um, But here you can see on this map the whole uh, corridor of 295. Again, it gets a little weird as you get up to Trenton there, but um, the historic corridor from the Delaware Memorial Bridge to Trenton has been in place for uh, a very long time. 
And the other thing that I would like to talk about when it comes to 295 is, after we go through a couple of pictures here, this is suburban Philadelphia, New Jersey suburbs and all that good stuff. Um, the Direct Connect project. Oh, yes. um, this is the construction project that will never end. Um, <laughs> I believe it was started in 2011. Wow. Does that sound right? I think that's right. Way too modern. <laughs> Yeah, so the idea here was to build dedicated roadways for the 295 main line uh, around the 42 and 76 interchange, uh, and also replace the. Are you are you guys you know okay over here or no. what are we okay okay we're having a moment okay um so to re so to divert the 295 main line onto its own set of flyovers and also to replace the existing ramps with more modern connections um where we stand right now in year 11 well, is that well no people took a seat a long time ago um but on this for good reason on this on this map you can see kind of how the contracts are broken out you know each you know it's color coded based on the uh the the the, the number of the contract so it's i the smartness of constructing each one yeah um, so this is kind of the overview of the project. And then as we go here... Huh. Yeah, we should... Imagine that. Was there a new story about this? <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah, so the, the failure of the retaining wall on the 295 main line is quite visible in the picture in the upper right. That happened about a year ago, I want to say. Um, Over a year. And it's, in, well, and it April. hasn't... Yeah. April. March or April. Okay. Well, it, hasn't, it hasn't been touched since then. Mm. No. It has. Well. well it may they not have been rebuilt, but they've well, certainly they, worked well, they, on... Well, they haven't fixed it yet, I guess. They've certainly worked on the fill to stabilize what's left there. Okay. Well, it's still kind of... This is... Yeah, I mean, this is a relatively recent picture, but... Um, so yeah, that that that's an issue that they have to deal with as well. Um, in the lower left, you have the Browning Road overpass over 295. Wow. That's that's kind of the main focus of construction right now. Um, you can see the temporary bridge on the left, which actually they've built to full ADA standard. There's a ADA compliant sidewalk on that bridge um, on the what is that? The north side of the structure there. Um, so there's, so they, you know, they built a temporary bridge, but they kind of realized that it's going to be there for quite a while. So they might well, as well. it took them enough years to build it in the first place. Yeah. They, still it won't took, be there as long as the work bridge in Mass. Well, it took them 11 years to get it. to this point. No, it's so. still there. I thought, I thought they had a definite project to replace it. No, it's still there. So this aerial view, you can see where... Um, the eventual main line of 295 will cross over the 42 and 76 freeway. If it doesn't collapse. Well, yeah, that, that remains to be seen, I suppose. Yeah. Um, it'll kind of cut across diagonally across the middle of this picture. Um, hmm. they, again, you know, we're 11 years in and we still have many years of work still to go. So Now this project, when it first started in 2013, was basically completed in 2021. Yeah, well, yeah. I I think, timeline. yeah, you know, I I think I it's, think it's done. Believe it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's gonna be some impressive bridge spans when that's done. It's gonna be one of the longer ones. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be a pretty interesting engineering challenge to put this over live traffic and all that stuff. You know. Do you want to talk about the house that they knocked down real quick? So there's a historic which, uh, house, which oh, yeah. was. Can I, am I allowed to touch the... I'll go to, go to the okay. TV screen and I'll translate. Right here. So north... Where the, so yeah. there's a historic house. Um, sort of the, the north... Hessians, things like that. And I'm, I'm not yeah. going to sit here and know the whole history of it. But there's a house here that they came in. You know, I guess there's some debate about knocking it down. You know, some of the locals kind, kind of started getting into it a little bit. 6 a.m. on a Friday morning. With state police watching over it, they came in and demolished the house. <laughs> get it done, get it out of the way. I think yeah, before wow. before NJ Spo weighs in. Yeah. State wow. Historic Preservation Office for those who don't know what that stands for. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, they, we knocked sure it down. Sorry. Been, they would have been very <laughs> interested in that if they knew about it. But yeah, well, and they, it was sitting there, you know, in in full view for three hundred years or two hundred something yeah. fifty wow. years. But I have, uh, I have a project with a house of not even of that old an age, but similar location in an interchange, and we're making very sure not to knock it down. So. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> since this was since this was designed by one of my competitors, I feel free to talk about what they did wrong at length. Yes. <laughs> and ironically, we're what, that what one. Com- what? Your company involved in this? I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've been there a week. I don't know what all we're involved in yet. <laughs> where that wall collapse occurred is just in just outside of that area where that house is located. So a lot of people think, you know, there's the little uh, voodoo spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but read up on that if you get a chance. <laughs> Interesting history there. Yeah, so that's the Direct Connect project. Uh, the name North South Freeway does not apply, or it does not appear on any road signs. You won't right. see any signage referring to it, but it refers to the freeway that includes Interstates 676, 76, and New Jersey Route 42 from it's the still, Ben Franklin still, Bridge. Okay. Eh, I, I don't. It's known as a. Yeah. It's a who? Other, other than you. No, no it, it, is still, it is still known by that, even if it's not signed. Well, okay. But, so those two interstates plus Route 42 down to Washington Township, that whole corridor there, um, is the focus of this set of slides. Um, built to connect the Walt Whitman and the Ben Franklin bridges with South Jersey and the road to the Atlantic City Expressway also. Um the section, the eastern approach to the Walt Whitman was the first section to be completed, and really the whole section down into Washington Township was built in the 1950s. Uh, the stretch through South Camden wasn't completed until the late 70s. That is because of neighborhood op- op- opposition to the original routings through South Camden, and there was some back and forth and renegotiation and whatnot until they agreed on an alignment through that area south of downtown. And then that is the alignment that was constructed and completed ultimately. On a lot of uh, Philadelphia area traffic reports, you will hear this highway referred to as the 42 freeway uh, because most of it is on the New Jersey Route 42 uh, corridor. So that's where that comes from. Most of the problems are. Well, yeah, right. And it really, 676 really rarely has any traffic issues. No, because most of the traffic there is splitting to the Walt Whitman Bridge. Where did you get this background that has Collingswood and Addenfield? Wait, what? Look at, look at the, the labels. <laughs> oh, Collingswood. And Inkton. <laughs> it's clearly just Google Maps screenshots. Well, it's, together. no, this is, this is Wikipedia. Oh, okay, That's, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, if it was Google, it would have actual shields. Google yeah. would not screw it up this badly. So. No. Yeah. And earlier yeah. maps said Oh, also, also, look where I send I mean, I just have 76. It's right. Look at that beautiful shield, though. Oh, yeah. So. 995 goes out to twin O. <laughs> um, so here's the 676 section through Camden. Um, Hold over. That's new. And then... I-76 reaches its eastern terminus at I-295 in the middle of that direct connect interchange garbage. So, and I think it only spends roughly two miles in the state of New Jersey. Um, Close to three, I think, when yeah. you include the bridge. Right, exactly. Well, okay, if you want to include the bridge. It's interesting as you go all these exit 1, A, B, C, D, and then exit 2, and then suddenly you're on 676 and you start with the 1s again. You'd be a little disconcerting if you're trying to follow by use the number. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then further south, you have Route 42 in suburban South Jersey. Gee, who erected that sign? Uh, it wasn't me. Um, yeah. yeah. So let's talk about the Missing Movements Project while Ooh. we're here. Um, so this is a separate contract from the Direct Connect that we were just on. Um, Even though it's happening more or less across the street from Direct Connect, it is not related to that project. This is a separate project that was developed individually and is being built separately from the Direct Connect project. Uh, You you look like you really want to jump out of your chair and say, like, 
two hours worth of shit right now. But Not two hours. <laughs> but one hour, 45 minutes. <laughs> I, I was involved in a project from roughly 2007 through 2010 that would have replaced the landfill to the south of the Missing Moves with a development. Mm -hmm. The original Missing Moves took off a little further south from the north-south freeway, went directly through the landfill to get to I-295, avoiding Creek Road, or uh, more or less avoiding Creek Road and then merging with 295. They wanted to have the entire landfill set aside for redevelopment and so worked with us. We developed a very large number of concepts related to how you get access to the site. But as far as the missing moves went, we had moved it north out of the site. Some of our alternatives involved having frontage roads on either side for that matter. Hmm. Um, Creek Road, right now, 753 Creek Road is one lane each way. We had that up as far as three lanes each way as a divided highway with signalized intersections and all that. Um, ultimately, the recession of 2009 through 2011 or 12 or so killed the redevelopment of the landfill. And we were very interested to see years later when the Missing Moves was published that they used our alignment that I had no small part in developing myself as the final alignment, preserving the landfill, even though there is no one actively redeveloping the landfill at this time. And so the point is apparently that at some point in the future they may choose to do it, and this preserves that ability, but at the same time you're taking existing properties, you can see it go across those roads there and take a few properties well, if you're not putting anything in the landfill, why are you taking existing properties? Well, they're using our alignment for it. So I, I sort of chuckle and grimace every time I see this. Well, it's some very important and influential trash. Um, well, yes, the company, the, the consulting <laughs> firm who ultimately designed this is trash, yes. <laughs> because they're not mine, but that's, that's true of every consulting firm that's not mine, so sorry. Mm-hmm. Hey. We'll hire you at some point, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Please note they're sitting on opposite sides of the room. Uh, next, next time I get Mike and you in the same room together, you guys are going to be like fighting over me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Um, here are some aerial pictures of the Missing cool. Movements project, project that were taken in late nice. June, so less than a month ago. I need to get down there. You, you know, you, you really should come and check this out sometime. You know, it's not bad. Most of the steel superstructure is up at this point on the on the two ramps. There's still some work to do over Route 42. That's going to be a that's going to be a bear doing that. I think if you go back to this previous slide, they have to they have to open up this off ramp on the right so that they can close the existing off ramp so that they can shift 42 north over so exactly. that they can build the pier Creek. so that they can build the pier in the middle here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's what has to happen okay, next. So. Yeah. So that's what's going to hold that up. And then I think there might be something similar that they have to do on the 295 southbound side also. But They have everything um, built in the uh, median of 295. They just have to put a cross piece over 295 south. Um, oh, is it one of those piers where they got the two legs and they need the cross beam yeah. between them? Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. So anyway, this old, this, this these pictures were from three weeks ago. So they will, you know, it'll... It'll still look largely like this in August, probably. What was your elevation above the above the road, the uh, bridge there, um, roughly? Not more than 150 feet. Okay. Yeah. Nice pictures. Yeah. And because this area is so flat, you don't need to go yeah. that high to get a good lay of the yeah. land, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. By the way, and when they finally do open that uh, ramp on the south, on the northbound side of 42. 55 will be two lanes going into 42. That's always uh, brought yeah. up, and that's part of this project. It's just extending the two lanes on 55 on, yeah. uh, on up there? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. So. <laughs> I feel like we need to get a camera on Steve to capture all this. So. Let's see here. All right, before we get on to the Atlantic City Expressway, I have a, uh, a super chat here from Redneck Lover that actually we should have probably talked about when we talked about the Turnpike. Um, are you two, like, writing love letters to each other? Like, what are you doing? Well, this is going to, no, I'm bringing up... I just cannot, I cannot bring this to people's attention. 
Uh, now I'm just okay. Well, did, did, you know, if you need to, if you need to step out, it's okay. You know, <laughs> yeah, we, all, we all, might, do also have phones on ours. We can just text each other. You, there's a nice table over there. You can this sit at. This is going to everyone here. Oh, that one must have shut. Yeah. Uh, Redneck Lover asks the question: Did they ever consider having I-95 follow the entire New Jersey Turnpike for the sake of continuity? Who wants to address no. that? No, they did not ever because Philadelphia. Well, I was going to say Philadelphia would have thrown a fit. Yeah, if they tried 95 to take. always went to Philadelphia. That was never a turnpike. Yeah. And they should, nor did the turnpike really care because they held it through traffic either way, so it didn't matter. Well, that and that's the other thing too is that the turnpike does act as a long distance bypass of Philly. So, yeah, it it kind of is sufficient by itself. It doesn't really need to have an interstate designation to. For that to be communicated. There's always been that common sense belief that 95 maybe should have gone the turnpike, but to Steve's point, there's no way. Philadelphia, 95, the end. Yeah. And then you don't need to complicate the matter even further by introducing 95E and 95W, so that that was never going to be an option. It's so, just not an option. Yeah. This is not Minneapolis, where it actually works well. But, you, know, you know, people on the East Coast don't really... They would not react very well to um, to suffix lettered interstates. Part, yeah, the, you know, you guys. I swear to God, do I have to evict you guys at some point here? Yes, yes, you yes. do. I'm not yeah. throwing anything. That's all him. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. Atlantic City Expressway. Peace. Who wants to tackle that for a moment? Why is it not an interstate? Because it's a toll road that that was around when they designated interstates on non toll roads. Done. Also, it had parking lots in the median. Also, it's an abomination. At this point, you could probably get an interstate on it, at least as far as the Garden State Parkway, but when it was first opened, no, you could not possibly. It has come a long way since then. Like, interchanges have been improved quite a bit, and now it's been widened to three lanes each way instead of first two lanes each way and then five lanes total. I still it, feel like it needs a lot of upgrades before it would justify an interstate. It, it's it's well, much closer now than it It's closer, but it's still much, cl much closer. The only yeah, other issue would be completing interchanges because a lot of it was half interchanges feeding into mainline toll plazas. Mm -hmm. Also, you know, something resembling standard signage would be nice. It, they're a lot better. <laughs> they're better at it now than they are with anything. They're better, but it's there. still garbage. Well, no, because they have to replace those. Right. Which is happening very soon, by the way. Oh, well, I think the other issue is. Also, bridge clearances. Yeah. Right? Because you have to bring it up to 16 bridge, feet. Yeah. A lot of the bridges on the expressway are 14 feet. 14.6 is the minimum to get an interstate designation. Well, but they're well, using 16 as... 16 is desirable. They will designate 14.6. Well, these aren't 14.6 either, so... No. That's, they would have <laughs> but I, that, I think that they, I think they really want to push 16, though. But no, they're, they're, that's, that's an issue we can discuss offline. Oh, that's fair. Um, or if there's people listening, we can discuss online, which is... You know, I'm amazed that people are still watching this, yeah. the way you people are behaving. <laughs> well, six, 16 feet is the interstate standard. However, for urban interstates, or in certain cases, you're able to make the case that 14.6 is okay to get away with. You're never going to get less than 14.6, but as long as every bridge is 14.6, you will be able to get the exception approved for that to become an interstate. You know, it is true. I've never met Rainey, but Rainey would be better behaved than you guys. Well, that's I mean, not I was very just hard. Reading that, and I'm yeah, like, really, we're behaving worse than toddlers? Yes. Because I'd like to meet Rainey, but yeah, I, I believe that to be true. You want to see I some Rainey in the Northwest? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's, a There's a lot of raininess going on. Okay. Boo. Take note, I walked there and said throwing things. Yes, you did. Yeah, see, at least somebody knows how to behave like an adult around here. <laughs> um. Real quick on Route 55, this is another South Jersey suburban freeway that was originally conceived as a means of getting you from Philly down to Cape May in freeway fashion. Uh -huh. um, really, it was not intended to bring suburbia to places like Glassboro and Deptford, but that's kind of what happened when they built it. Uh -huh. um, I love the Deptford Mall. I think the Deptford Mall's not bad, but it wouldn't really exist or wouldn't be accessible without Route 55. Why do you love the Deptford Mall? Yeah. Well, Deptford loves it. Deptford okay. Mall's been there since the mid '70s, so it existed yeah. for 12, 13, 14 years. It's like the only thing there. Much. Well, yeah. Plus, but Deptford it, Mall has the exit right off 42, also. So. Yes. Okay. Well, that, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, I am obliged contractually to tell you about the long lost Cape May extension, which would have finished out the southernmost 20 miles of this highway between it's Millville and. It's not dead. Technically not dead. Well, it hasn't been officially removed from right. the. What, the state route log or something like yeah, that? It's never been officially killed off, unlike most New Jersey highways that are dead. So, yeah. Quite, theoretically, yeah. it could. Right. It's Every, yeah, every once in a while you hear somebody, some local politician bring it up, you know. Some, in some form, yeah. Yeah. So here's the dotted line that mm. there's roughly 20 miles of freeway that's not complete between Port Elizabeth and Cape May County. Um, again, is it, it's, to me it seems like a pipe dream at this point, but it is not officially dead in the eyes of the state of New Jersey. Right. Um, and it would be a very useful highway, too. Mm-hmm. In the years since the 55 freeway was kind of shelved, although not permanently, there have been improvements made to routes 47 uh, and 83, especially. There's also the creation of the route 347 bypass in the late 80s. That has also helped with some of the traffic flow heading down to uh, Cape May and Wildwood. Um, but you still don't have a freeway connection through that area. Right. Um, really, the biggest obstacle would be environmentally. Um, the Belle Plaine State Forest, also the wetlands around um, Dennis Township. Uh, mm-hmm. that would, those would be very eco-sensitive areas to try to build some sort of freeway through. So that's, that's kind of where we stand right now. I've even seen one local politician in the last few years float the idea of building a 20-mile-long uh, toll causeway bridge mm, okay. between Port Elizabeth and, yeah, I mean, but, but, you know, these are the kinds of ideas that you need to float out there for something like yeah. this, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, I wouldn't be opposed to that. Speaking of toll roads it would, that it would, never got built. It, well, it would give me a lot of job security, that's for sure, if I could get on that job. Mm-hmm. You know? New Jersey Shields with no black background. So you see a lot of those now. <laughs> Good. Good. Yep. Yeah. So let's talk about freeways that kind of don't go anywhere, or they just basically serve the immediate area around the bridges they connect to. So the Br- the Betsy Ross Bridge approach, which is signed as New Jersey Route 90, um, <laughs> connects the bridge really with U.S. Route 130 and New Jersey Route 73. The two two of the main arterial highways in that part of Philly Metro. Um, It was intended to go a lot further east than it does. It ends at Route 73 in Mapleshade. It may have gone as far east as I-295 or maybe even beyond that. Yeah. Um, Every variant went at least to 295. A couple of them went beyond that. Yeah, yeah. And um, actually, I think the initial section of this highway only went as far as Route 130. Hmm. And then it wasn't then until the bridge. Right, right, right. yeah the Pensalkin Creek Bridge was an issue. Uh, getting the environmental clearance mm-hmm. just to go as far as Route 73 was a challenge because uh, right after the interchange here on the right, it, with uh, whatever route that is, 644, um, there's a bridge, there's a there's a embankment, and then an overpass over Pensalkin Creek, and that's it was the state wetland designation of some sort and that's mm-hmm. what held that up for a number of years mm-hmm. but here you see highlighted in red the extent of this of the highway that's designated as new jersey route 90. um it would more or less follow the creek just the river just to its east basically to get to 295. yeah yeah we'll we'll kind of circle back to this when we talk about our unbuilt highways but yeah it, it kind of would have gone diagonally f- this way, mm, yeah. in this general direction, yeah. And it would have been a pretty useful highway to have. You could also argue that on the Pennsylvania side, but that, that was last one. Well, we already talked about that, young man, so <laughs> you'll have to go back to part one to hear us talk about the Pennsylvania side of that bridge and what happened there, and what is still happening there. Um, yeah, here's... Here's a couple of views here on the Jersey side facing west. I always have liked that, how they do the Easy Pass banner, how Derpa does that. I don't, I don't I like any signs from Derpa. Well, yeah, because yeah, you have impossibly high standards, and I don't. And so. I don't yeah. like the crazy font that they use for yeah, Easy Pass. Exactly, exactly. 
Yeah. Anyway. I don't like that they charge tolls. <laughs> It's funny. Gee, I never, I, I never, I never knew that about you. Uh, that's interesting. It okay. was very fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> um, the Ben Franklin Bridge approach is also worth mentioning. It's part of US 30. Although I'm also obliged to tell you a little bit about routes 38 and 70, which continue off east from the Jersey Freeway section of the approach. Uh, 38 and 70 being two significant divided highway corridors around Cherry Hill and Moorestown and that area of Philly Metro. Um, this freeway, well, it's known as, it's what you call a Jersey freeway, which maintains no cross traffic, yet there is right in, right out access to businesses and at intersections. Yep. Um, is there anything else that a Jersey freeway is known as? Or That's it. Did I cover it? That's it. Okay. Um, the Brent Franklin Bridge it's, pr- approach itself is named in honor of Admiral uh, Henry Wilson, who was Baird. Is it, see, because that's how it's spelled. It's fair. No, the R should be right before the D. See, because I, I don't. You, you misspelled. That's okay. You'll, well, you'll fix it when you post the presentation. Well, I mean, it's yeah. posted right now, but there. Well, I, I yeah. Trust uh, me on this. Well, okay, yeah, okay, sure. Trust me on the number of projects I do in this immediate area. It's well, Oh, okay. Um, Admiral Wilson was um, a commander in the U.S. Navy during World War I. Uh, he rose to the rank of admiral, uh, mainly, I believe, for his service during the First World War. He took command of a lot of the forces based in France in 1917 and 18. Oh, sure. Thank you. Um, so that's where that name comes Real from. Real quick on that last uh, shot there. Which the one? one uh, overhead sign shows uh, E70 to 72 and 37. That's the last time you're going to see 7, 72 and 37 mentioned until you get to 72 and 37. Yeah. Yes, 37 is there. 37's a long way away that from... Is, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is a relatively new sign also. Although I assume that they put that in for Jersey Shore traffic interests, right? I, I'm going to check that, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if that is a new good. addition to this. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, so. Yeah, and at the east end of the freeway itself, you have the Can junction confirm, of... 3772 are very new additions to the sign. They were not there in the previous iteration. Mm. Right. Mm-hmm. At all. Yeah. Um, so at the east end of, this, of the full freeway, you've got 30 meeting 130... And then that's where 38 and 70 come together on the east end of that junction. So you kind of have a whole, you kind of have a whole, you know, hodgepodge of routes coming together there. They sign, eastbound, they sign it as if the two routes are together, but westbound it's clear that 70 ends and only 38. Go back to that slide for a second. There's other stuff there I want to talk about. You know, 38 is the actual route there. What I want to note in the top left is you see the last exit on 30 before you get to the Ben Franklin Bridge. And you could see uh, the existing Federal Street overpass, which dates to when they built the boulevard in the 1930s, mm. is still very much there. And that is a constraint both on 30 going under it and on traffic going into and out of Camden from the east because Federal Street would be more major if you could fit more lanes on that overpass, but you can. Mm. So everything associated with this is a big is a big, bold statement on access to Camden. If Camden ever turns around the way that they're trying to and start to make inroads on, this whole thing is going to have to be replaced right away in mm. order to accommodate that. I just want to, I just want to note that about the top left. Hey, especially the bottom right, so that's the aer- airport circle down right there, and that's the <laughs> first uh, airport in the United States, I believe. It's right off to the uh, southeast side. The first, the first commercial airport? I believe so. It was at least Billy's first airport. Yeah. And, College um, Park, Maryland. There are definitely airport. places you could take off and land before this yeah. one was built, but this may be the first commercialized one with a term, central terminal or whatever. Right. And right. that right. airport eventually became a Kmart shopping center, and we all know what happened to Kmart. But, uh, wasn't I forget there, wasn't there a drive through movie theater there also for a number of years? In the general in At the, at the circle. I thought one of the quadrants of the circle was a drive-in. Maybe it was the airport became a drive-in for a few years. 
I, I forget where. I thought it was right there. History. We good, guys? We're good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Continue on. Roll All on. Right. You want to talk about 76C? That is the first shield I've ever seen for it in my life. See, I'm good. You know, I come prepared to these webinars. Why is you that know? one Delaware style, but the 168 is New Jersey um, style? That is a good question. <laughs> um, that is the one that I was able to find on Wikipedia. So. <laughs> That's his answer, and he's sticking to it. I'm sticking to it. I did better than you were able to come up with, so <laughs> there's that. The floor is yours, though. No, the, the, really, the floor is yours because you're the 76C expert. Okay. All right. I came up with the slide, and now I'm going to have to do all the narration, too. I mean, you know, I'm doing all the work around here. And you I'm, are. I'm doing it for free, too. You know that? You are We're doing a great team. job. I brought you your, 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 your knowledge. I'm trying. You know, and you he guys. Does all of this by memory too. I mean, he's uh, not using a script or anything. Yeah. He no. knows the stuff. Yeah, I'm doing it even with you guys throwing mm -hmm. shit at each other. So, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> there's, you know, I'm, I'm, not I'm literal shit. We'll, I'm making we'll make that clear. Well, we have to get a little yeah. more drunk before that happens. But well, uh, that, yeah, that's yeah. Cool. So we've talked about the freeway approach to the Betsy Ross Bridge. We've talked about. The same one for the Ben Franklin Bridge. Mm -hmm. There is another one for the Walt Whitman as well. And this one has the unsigned designation of New Jersey Route 76C. Now, it, it, it does connect the bridge with Black Horse Pike, which is New Jersey Route 168. This is an interesting example of a freeway that is maintained by the Delaware River Port Authority. Mm. Um, the full length of the freeway, I believe, yes. is under DERPA maintenance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, very unusual that you would see an entire freeway corridor uh, under their maintenance. Although they do also maintain parts of I seventy six in Philadelphia, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken, all the way out to the Sharp Curve, out to the railroad yeah. overpass, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. So that whole stretch there in South Philly is also under DERPA maintenance. Um, the story of the Camden Interloop Freeway, we will highlight this when we talk about our unbuilt uh, highways in a little bit, but this was the southern end of what was supposed to be a freeway that would wrap around the east side of Camden and then loop back north to connect with the Betsy Ross Bridge approach in Pensauken. Uh, this, whole, this freeway corridor was known as the Camden Interloop. Mm -hmm. um, most of it never saw the light of day. This was this section of freeway that survives today was developed as part of that project. Mm -hmm. It's the only part of it that lived to see uh, construction. And one last note about the designation. I, I don't have it highlighted here, but that's that's this piece of highway here. So 676 meets 76, and then this little piece that branches off here is the uh, Camden Inner Loop section. Mm -hmm. um, the designation of 76C is a curious one, and it's I haven't been able to come up with... It's a connector. So, okay, so I haven't been able to come up with what the C actually stands for. Yeah, connector. Does it stand for connector? Yes. Or does it stand for Camden? Connector. At least now it does. But <laughs> well, originally well, I couldn't tell you, but I know now they refer to it 76 connector internally. So the reason why I hesitate to go along with that is because back in the day there used to be interchanges on the Garden State Parkway with a P suffix. For Patterson. For Patterson. Completely different agency. So my hesitation there is because I wonder if it has to do with Camden and not Connector. Well, I, completely different agency. The only time that you dealt with a city name being involved there, and I can tell you now for a fact it's 76 Connector now. Also, a difference between root number and exit numbers. Yeah, it's a very short highway. If you if you blink, you miss it. But there there are still some there are a couple of interesting signs here and there that you can see. Without having to pay the toll, because you can just loop off of the ramp if you're going west and take six seventy six north instead. All right, uh -huh. we have arrived at the Road Enthusiast Classic portion of the program. Woohoo! <laughs> they can't—they uh -huh. can't see you on the screen, Steve. I know. 
people here. You still look fantastic. <laughs> Never better. Thank you, Vanna. <laughs> you should pose for a picture. Um, we've come to the Road Enthusiast Classic section of the program. Um, this is one of those state highways that never fails to entertain and impress road enthusiasts, whether it be the 1990s in the MTR days or nowadays on the AA Roads Forum in the year 2022. Uh, the topic of New Jersey Route 324 is always an interesting one, and it's one that people never seem to shy away from talking about. This is the old alignment of U.S. Route 322 through Bridgeport, New Jersey. Uh, back in the days before the Commodore Barry Bridge was a thing, uh, you used to have to take the ferry from Bridgeport over to Chester. Mm. And when the bridge opened in 1974, the ferry was closed. However, the state of New Jersey never gave back the right of way. They always maintained the old road under their jurisdiction. And it was reassigned the number 324 after US 322 was relocated to the bridge. Mm. So, and in the years since then, New Jersey DOT has really not done much of anything as far as maintenance is concerned. Yet in 2017, roughly, they put up these mile markers, like the ones you can see on the left here. They put up all but one. Well, they didn't put up mile zero. Is that what you're talking about? No. Well, well they did put this one up. I, I don't know that. You don't know that. What? As far well, as we know, that, yeah. well, the, the, if anybody asked, okay. that, that was never there. Well, okay. Um, yeah, New Jersey DOT kind of took the interesting move to sign Route 324 um, in the form of these mile markers you see in the picture on the left. And yes, one of them is sitting in my living room today. <laughs> so, When they were doing some work down there by the river, they even had to uh, plow in the wintertime. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it's... I don't think they'd be that thing. Well... It's, it's weird to think that they couldn't give this back to the town. There were a couple of them like that. What On would, the I other mean, side of that interchange there at the bottom of the screen, they did. So, is it technically legal to drive or not? Yes. Because I noticed the road closed signs. Yes, but it is still legal to drive. It doesn't lead to anything, which is why it says road closed. But there's no ferry for you at the, at the road. Yeah. But there's no trespassing signs. You, you're fine. There's, yeah, there's, there's nothing, there's there's nothing there's that says no, no, no trespassing. No right, exactly. 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 I think the spirit of that is more advisory in nature. Just yeah. to say, hey, there's nothing up ahead here. Right. There's no look, real... Look black on white, not black on yellow to me. No, no. it is black on white. <laughs> yes, the road is closed <laughs> up ahead at the at the river. Yeah, so... Which can yeah, you can't get ahead. to the river. Can you? Oh, yeah. Well, you can... Pretty much. You can walk off... You gotta walk a little bit, but... Walk down into the river. Yeah. Yeah. And if you drove fast enough, because there's a point that the growth gets. Oh, it, it's it, one lane. It grows obnoxious. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. one lane of traffic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There you like go. that. There you go. Yeah. There's yeah, no it's, sign of the old ferry down there, is it? No. Nah. Not really. No. Um, you can kind of see where the road leads, and there's kind of like an extension that juts out into the river to kind of tell you where the plaza would have been, where the ferry would have come in, but none of the actual old ferry infrastructure remains. So, I believe this old 322 shield will still be with us uh, come August, so you'll be able to see that as well. I mentioned that South Jersey is pretty flat. It's like flat, like Illinois is. So, a little you know, you can, don't, don't say that. We don't want to invite controversy. Yeah, if, you know, if, you go, <laughs> if you go further <laughs> south, a little piece of this would be Delaware. So. Yeah, 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 a little bit. True. Yeah, yeah. Um, here's kind of what the the overall look of the old road is. Yeah, and you can see where the bridge alignment is and, right. and all that. Yeah. Ah, our friend is back. Yep. And so were the rest of us in the room. We talked about the unbuilt freeways of Philadelphia County last time. I'm here to reinforce for you the, uh, the unbuilt freeways of the New Jersey side of the metro. Uh, and we'll do that here. So we were just talking about the, um, the Camden Interloop Freeway, right? So that's... A user on Reddit put this together a few years ago, and he's done a really good job of kind of illustrating where all these different highways were supposed to go. 
and it, he's been if you look at his work and the actual plans and you compare the two he's he's pretty good he's got it just about dead on I think um, so what I've highlighted in yellow is the Camden Interloop freeway I am going to highlight the Route 90 extension here that we also mentioned a few minutes ago. I, I question that routing. I, there, I know there were many different alignments. The most plausible one would have been a fair bit north of that, almost to that next shield that you see for 38. It would have, it would have been a couple, it would have been a mile, I'll say a solid mile and a half north of 73, not right along that alignment. Yeah. I feel like with that one, he's just kind of just, I don't know, if he's not averaging it out, he's kind of picking the, picking something, picking something you know? Yeah. yeah. And then in blue, at the far top right, we haven't talked about I-895 yet tonight, but that's another one that deserves to be talked about. Um, maybe more so when it comes to discussion about bridges, but uh, 895 being the proposed replacement of the Burlington-Bristol Bridge. Um, we talked about all of this last time, so I won't go over this what? again. They are showing some route numbers on there. They're most unusual. <laughs> it's hard to see what all the route numbers would be. But... I, I think you should put your face right up to the TV screen and, and read, it, read them to us. Well, it, is hard, it is really hard to tell what they're showing. Like they, they, have a four, they have a number 14 in there, which is most unusual. Well, no, see, what, what? No, that's not the root number. Like, there's a legend for this. Is that, is that a desert? Is that a yeah? Plane, so like fourteen. So like Thank each you. of the numbers means something. Thank you, know? you, because that. My goodness, if those were actual root numbers. All right. Okay. Yes, thank you, Laura, for being administrator tonight. I know, I know she's, I know she's ill and can't be with us in person, but be sure to boot all the knuckleheads out that you have to. Um, how do you like these options for Route 90, Steve? Are these better? Mm -hmm. Do these meet your high quality freeway gym guideline standards? <laughs> No, much better than him. Um, the, the substitute, oh. the substitute <laughs> green roof. My man, put your black cloth down. The substitute green route is the one that had the most traction in it before it was killed. Okay. As I said, it was a, a fair distance off of the. It, it was north of seventy three, which is. Yeah. And you, it, what actually got built was that piece to Cinnamonson, so you could tell that's what they had going for them. Yeah. So that's the figure on the left. Now on the figure on the right, you can see the dotted line that was Interstate 895 for a number of years. Um, and this was, well, I don't know, we'll save this for the bridges section. We'll save the discussion about that for later. But just know that that's out there, because we're going to refer yeah, back to that. 895, I think, was a bigger deal on the Pennsylvania side than ever was on the New Jersey side. Save that thought for a second. Sure, sure. Bridges of the Delaware River. Huzzah. Uh, we're going to talk about these bridges on the screen tonight as they are within reasonable distance of Philadelphia Metro. And they are at least a little bit relevant to meet weekend. Maybe not all of them are, but you know, at least most of these or all of these are within the Delaware Valley Metro. Um, okay, so, Turnpike Bridge, maintained by both the PTC and the New Jersey Turnpike Authority. False. Did New Jersey take it over? There is an agreement between the two, but there is no, each agency does certain things, but they'll do it for the entire length of the bridge. Mm. They, they, there's no one task that is split between either one. Everything is either all one or all the other agency. D didn't it's it a unique be, situation. Didn't it used to be otherwise that the oh, that, they, that they go up to the state line and stop or something? Not to my knowledge on I, this. Bridge. I have a vague memory of like the light standard lights lighting years ago being different on between the two states, and it's changed right at the line. But that might have been 20 years ago, 20 or 30 years. I ago. I will doubt that one also. 
but I haven't seen that. Okay. See, I, I remember there being a change of pavement at the middle that's of this bridge. That's Yes, that's right. But I don't know if that's still the case or not. Yeah. Um, Steve, did you? is there anything that you can disclose about the structural issue five nope. years ago? No, you're good? All right. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't... I don't know why I bother I having this guy on. Why is he here tonight? He's, why I bring him on for his expertise in New Jersey, <laughs> and then every time that something legit comes up that I want him to comment about, he's like, "Nope, I'm good. I don't want to say nothing." Well, the, <laughs> you know. the crack is on the <laughs> south side of the bridge, on the Pennsylvania side over land. Oh, it's so from Pennsylvania. Too. Well, it was. There's a no. I thought I thought the crack no, it was, was on the New Jersey I, side. I thought it was too. Based based on what I recall from what we had no. to do to. Get it analyzed and fixed. It was all the setup was on the New Jersey side. Yeah. Well, Jeff is going to go to the Google. Yeah, I, I remember. I remember where we sent all because the, inter- the internet is never wrong, you know. Google is your friend. That's right. But as far as the structural scare goes, it was a very unique situation. That fortunately, we looked at the rest of the structure and said, "No, this is isolated. Not something we have to worry about elsewhere." Okay. That, that's really all I can say about it here. Now, independent of that, there is planning underway for a parallel bridge. I okay, you're, you know what? I, no, I legitimately do You're, not have you're that useless answer. at this point. I legitimately <laughs> do not have that answer for you one way or the other. It's not like I'm hiding something. I think it was mentioned in the uh, proposal to raise tax tolls in New Jersey that this was a project that would be funded in part by the higher they, tolls. They were originally looking at this when they thought that the that connecting 95 would bring so much more traffic to it. And when they looked at the traffic volumes, they realized it wasn't that bad. It was no longer of critical priority to address yeah. for traffic reasons. And it hasn't really... So I, I can't speak to the rest of it. It hasn't really reasons. materialized, especially in the westbound direction, because that's the direction you have to pay the toll in. All right. Yeah, um, no, it, it's been... It's been more evenly divided, but it's still... Right. I, it's I will... From time to time, I will cross this bridge going eastbound. And it's a lot heavier going into Jersey than into Pennsylvania, but that's because mm-hmm. you're paying like a six or seven dollar toll at the bridge. Going yeah, because you pay on both sides. Well, you pay, you, you leave New Jersey, then you pay and you go to Pennsylvania. Well, yeah, you leave New Jersey, price. you pay the toll at the bridge, and right. then if you stay on the pike, you're getting nailed there too. Yep, so right. that's right. Yeah. So. Right, and then you if you can actually afford to continue on to Ohio, then <laughs> oh. <laughs> Well, then the westernmost uh, yeah. miles are also free if oh, you're going God. westbound. Yeah. Yeah. You have to dip into your 401k by the time you hit Indiana. Hey, yeah. I did it three weeks ago. <laughs> no, Harris, Harris Ohio Harris was reasonable. On the wow. One source. Was it just you or, or was he with you? Mm. David's uh, not anyway. like <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Okay. That's, that's a good reason. So we, we kind of teased the Burlington-Bristol Bridge with our talk about 895 a few minutes ago. Um, this bridge, it's a two-lane vertical lift bridge connecting those two towns at the far northeast of Philly Metro. Um, it's been around, I think, since 1930. It's not really been modified all that much since then. And surprisingly, it's still here because in the late 1980s, it very nearly was uh, met by the wrecking ball oh. um, for a six-lane freeway. For a six in favor of a six-lane freeway, but I-895. I think the final death knell for 895 was a public referendum in Pennsylvania, or was it in Jersey? I hate Pennsylvania. So but explain that. For I you. actually think it might have been Jersey. No, we don't. We but don't. Yeah. Damn public always shooting things down. The, the yeah. referendum centered around funding for the six-lane freeway bridge, and that was shot down in, I believe, 1989, 1990, mm-hmm. something like that. Um, and since then, all funding from the Burlington County Bridge Commission has gone into maintaining the existing bridge. Um, but I-895, had it been built, it would have utilized a replacement of this bridge, which would have been located slightly downstream of the existing bridge's site. Uh, It would have tied into I-95 at more or less where the Route 413 interchange is Mm -hmm. in Bristol Township, and it would have tied into I-295 somewhere around mile marker 45, Mm -hmm. I think. Um, it would have basically run due north to south, and it would have served as another connector across the river. 
that I'm sure would have made the Pennsylvania Turnpike Commission unhappy. Yes. But um, that's right. it's another one of those short freeway connectors that was planned for Philly Metro that never saw the light of day. Supposedly that's one of the reasons why 295 is four lanes wide in this direction in that area. Yeah, so there's that, and then there's also the 295 roadways widen out, or they, they split into a median. Mm -hmm. There's like a wide median in that area where they planned an interchange. That's what I've, that's what I've read. I don't know if it's true or not, but it, the location matches roughly where the... Yeah. But anyway, um, there is indication that they did, in fact, intend to connect that into something. But the bridge as it is today, um, I mean, it's it's interesting if you like mechanical-looking structures and, and all that. Um, just don't be on either shore when a barge is going through or a ship because, you know, you'll get stuck in the, the bridge opening for quite a while. Right. Actually, on KYW News Radio out of Philadelphia, they make the point of broadcasting when these bridges are going to open mm. they try to give you as much heads up as possible like like you'll be listening on a just to, to, just to give you an example like on a saturday morning like around 10 o'clock and they'll say something like oh the burlington bristol bridge will be opened at 11 this morning mm -hmm. or something just to kind of give you a heads up you know so they're, they're it's refreshing to know that they are proactive in that mm -hmm. manner and you the know, direction of the ship, so it'll say the Tycoon will open up shortly thereafter. Or right, you can kind of tell, right, yeah. Mm -hmm. How'd you like to be on that boat right now? <laughs> no, I didn't do anything. Quick uh, side chat here. I'll, most of the steel piles for the replacement of the Tappan Zee Bridge passed underneath this bridge. Hmm. There was a uh, a yard up river near Roebling, New Jersey, that they were manufactured and stored at for a couple of years, mm -hmm. and they were all barged down the Delaware River and up the Jersey coast mm -hmm. to make it to Terrytown. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the bridge would have had to be raised for these barges because they were rather low lying uh, barges as it was. They might have been able to clear the bridge without it having to be raised. If, if they didn't raise the bridge in the 1980s, they weren't going to raise it just because we had to get stuff up the river. R-A-Z. Excuse me, what? Oh, no. Boom. <laughs> yeah. um, Shh. Uh, speaking of raised bridges, um, this one is notorious in Philadelphia because of its uh, history of getting stuck uh, in the open position. I know that that's happened on a lot of occasions over the years. It's like a rite of passage if you're a Philadelphia resident, like to be stuck when this bridge is stuck. You know, <laughs> like it's it's happened to just about everybody. You just go around the the communities and you're like, oh, I remember in 1983 when the the, the Tacony Palmyra Bridge got stuck. You know, <laughs> everybody's got a Tacony Palmyra Bridge story. Um, this was the second bridge built over the Delaware River at Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. the, the first one is one that we'll talk about in a few minutes here. Um, but this one being located in northeast Philly, it didn't receive the attention or the, the amount of traffic that it... and mm -hmm. the, It didn't receive the amount of credit that it perhaps deserves, because this is a very interesting bridge it definitely if you gets break traffic. it. Well, I mean, it gets traffic, but not, you know, semi, not center city traffic. No, everybody, um, nobody uses Betsy Ross compared to this. I don't know. From what I from what I've seen in Northeast Philly, a lot more people head to this than are trying to head to Betsy Ross because of, even yeah. when the new ramp opened, they still head to this one instead. Yeah, yeah I mean, I don't, well, then, well, then the difference in tolls is another factor, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because um, the toll for the Burlington County bridges is cheaper than for the Delaware River Port Authority mm -hmm. bridges. I'm, so. I'm just speaking out loud. I don't know. What outbound more people head to 73 yeah um because it's a very interesting bridge you've got the double leaf bascule section here and then you've got the the fixed steel arch here um you know it's it's looking pretty good for being roughly 92 years old or wow. however old it is mm -hmm. yeah so it's doing pretty well it's very aesthetic it is yeah you can't say that about every bridge in the metro 
This one has managed to stand the test of time also. Um, we talked about New Jersey Route 90 earlier this evening. We've talked about what the hell was supposed to happen on the Pennsylvania side of the river last time. So I will simply tell you that the Betsy Ross Bridge, which has a historic name in more ways than one, it was it's obviously named for the American Betsy Ross, but it was also the first major highway bridge in America to be named for a woman. So there's that as well. Um, this was built as part of a long-range freeway corridor, as I'm sure you know by now, connecting uh, Interstate 295 and the Jersey Turnpike with possibly Roosevelt Boulevard and beyond in the northeast of Philadelphia. Um, this bridge was actually built in the early 1970s. It was completed in early 1974, but was not opened until two years later mm -hmm. because the residents of the Bridesburg section of Philadelphia raised hell about the temporary ramps that were supposed to connect their neighborhood with the bridge, and the interchange with I-95 had not been completed yet. Um, so they had to wait two years to get the ramps to 95 completed um, so that the residents were okay with opening this ramp uh, connection to the bridge. Always, It's always been an underutilized crossing, uh, in large part because of the lack of freeway access on both sides of the river or the lack of connectivity in the regional freeway system. But when they planned it, they obviously had planned for much more extravagant uh, connections on both sides. Here's a railroad bridge for you, because, you know, I am inclusive, and I like to talk about other kinds of bridges, too. <laughs> this is the only purely railroad bridge that crosses the Delaware River in this area. Um, it goes back to 1896, I believe. Oh. It did not look like this in 1896, actually. And I'll go to this slide to kind of detail this for you. Actually, let me, um, let me double back for a second. So in this picture here, you see the original swing span. Mm. Um, this was the original movable span for the bridge. And it, was, it stayed like this until the 1950s. When the Delaware River shipping channel was widened and dredged, they realized that they needed a much bigger or much wider navigation span for this bridge. So they ripped out a couple of the, the original truss spans and put in this vertical lift span in the middle. And that was completed in the early 60s. And that gave the bridge the appearance that it has today. Um, so it's important to recognize that that main, that central figure, that of the superstructure was not original to the bridge. It was added much later. Uh, this bridge carries freight rail traffic as well as the Atlantic City branch of New Jersey Transit. Um, so I think they run a couple of trains on that a day and it's a pretty active bridge. Again, it's the only rail bridge in this part of the Delaware River watershed. So it, it sees its fair amount of traffic. I like these old rail bridges too, you know, they, they are slowly starting to disappear because, you know, they're, most of the bridges built in this generation are well in excess of 100 years old. If you look at the bridges on the Northeast Corridor, um, they're about that old as well, so. And it shows if you look up close at them. And they are getting replaced. Well, yeah, they. So it's going to get replaced pretty soon. For, yeah. for a while recently, my commute involved walking across an old railroad bridge. Oh. Oh, so, oh, this, nice. so this uh, Ohio or Mississippi River Bridge or what have you is also fairly on the list. This one? Missouri River or something like that, yeah. Uh, well, I mean... Where, where you want to see more like that look like this, you're going to have to head out there. Yeah, well, right. I mean, there's still a lot of them out there, but nowhere near as many as there used to be, I guess is my point. Um, here's an old classic that's still with us, and hopefully this one's not going anywhere anytime soon. Um, the Ben Franklin Bridge connects 
central Camden with central Philadelphia. It was the first bridge built over the Delaware River at Philly. It opened in 1926 as the world's largest suspension bridge. It held that title for three years until the completion of the Ambassador Bridge in 1929. I would say this is still the finest of Philadelphia's Delaware River bridges, even all these years later. It has definitely maintained its charm in the nine decades that it's been in service. And it's named in honor of some guy who flew a kite once upon a time and discovered electricity. I feel like he's done one or two other significant things as well, but, you know. But we don't know. That, the minor details. Yeah. You know. The bridge is obviously... He gave his fun. name to a number of townships on the east side of the bridge. Yes, he has. How many Franklin townships are there? Six? Well, seven? towns, boroughs, other stuff, there's probably six. It's either five or six. Yeah, that's a lot. Um, this bridge carries seven lanes of traffic. There is a central lane that is reversible. It has pedestrian walkways on both sides of it. It also has two railroad tracks, one on each side of it, for the Patco subway line, which runs from Center City out to Lindenwald, New Jersey. Here's a train that you can see going over the bridge. And this is... Since I started flying a drone in the Philadelphia area, this has been one of my favorite spots to come back to on the Camden waterfront, yes. where you have a great view of the bridge and also Center City there. Just kind of hanging out there in the background. Yeah, New Jersey's tried opening up that waterfront there in recent years. There used to be a, a prison just to the north of the uh, bridge that Long shut now. down and Long gone. Now, yeah. There is a ball field just south of the bridge for the Camden River Sharks, which is actually a really enjoyable ball field. Watch a good minor league game. Campbell's field. And, um, Stadium. Yeah. and just watch the bridge throughout the entire game. Watch which it. I, think I would watch that train now. go back and forth. I don't Wonderful. know of an active team, and maybe one that's not in the... The last system. I knew, Campbell was dilapidated. Well, the, the just to the south, the, the river from Amphitheater is very much active. I'm going to two concerts later this year there, so. Mm-hmm. That, that is, that and getting across the bridge are reasons to visit Camden for now. Yeah, the Camden waterfront is actually, dare I say, pretty nice. You know, like, at that least, you know. That is a dare. Well, it, it, I mean... It's, it's nice decent. by day with other people around you. Well, that's that's what I'm yeah. saying, yeah. And you got the aquarium there. And yeah. it, it gets a good amount of uh, visitation there. Yeah. Key, daytime. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know of anybody who wants to hang out there at night. And so. I'll be the completest. Campbell's Field, the baseball field, was closed and demolished in 2018. So it is gone. Boom. Boom. That <laughs> goes in that parking lot. In that right picture, yes, to the left there, that's where it was. And it was at one time was one of the best ballparks in the country. So it goes, it, it goes it back a long way, or it, right? It was yeah. in the Atlantic League, uh, which speaks to the likes of the Bridgeport Bluefish no longer existing, and teams like that. Same league. Atlantic City, I think, had a team Atlantic League. City had the surf. Yep, Newark had a team. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, the old Newark Bears. The old Newark yeah, Bears. Yeah, Newark yeah. Eagles. They were known as both. Oh, okay. All right. Next up was the second suspension bridge built over the Delaware River in Philly. Uh, this one was conceived... I mean, the, the, the genesis of this really goes back to the 1930s. It didn't really pick up steam until the years after World War II. But the initial plans for a river crossing in South Philly involved a tunnel, uh, which would have roughly run from Paulsboro, New Jersey, over to South Philly, roughly where the International Airport is today. Um, there even was a New Jersey State Highway designation given to this project, the Gloucester County Tunnel, which was New Jersey Route 44T. Um, the tunnel idea was passed over ultimately as being too costly. I believe this was in the years leading up to World War II. So the war pretty much put a stop to the tunnel idea. And then when plans restarted after the war, uh, everyone was in general consensus about a bridge being the preferred option. And so they located the bridge here in South Philly in Gloucester City. 
uh, much closer to Center City. Um, the bridge was completed in 1957. Um, it's a very standard, straightforward, you know, streamlined 1950s-esque suspension bridge. It's nothing really all that special. Um, it does bear a significant resemblance to the Delaware Memorial Bridge further south. Um, in fact, that's in part because those two bridges had the same uh, chief consultant engineer, Othmar Amon. So he was involved in both those bridges. Uh, this bridge's he name... In my town. Did he really? In Booton? Yep. I didn't know that. You're not supposed to tell people where I live and I'm going to get stalked. Well, I mean, you know. Oh, well. Well, yep. whatever. His house you is, love visitors. His you, house is a block away from Oh, home. stop. You're lonely. You could use visitors. <laughs> it's not labeled in any way, but if you look it up, you'll see exactly where he lives. And that, that's one of the places. Hmm. Okay. Um... The name of this bridge is given to the American author and poet Walt Whitman, who lived out his final Ooh. years in Camden, New Jersey. Real quick little thing on that. Personally, this is my favorite bridge going across the, uh, the Delaware here. That little barrier right there, so that zipper barrier, they got one on this one and the Ben Franklin. Yeah. Um, the Ben Franklin is concrete, this one's metal. They had a concrete one on here when they did reconstruction a number of years ago. They needed... They, they had to shut down a lane at a time with the other barrier. They needed room. So they came up with this uh, metal barrier. It gave them six additional inches. That's all. But that that's what they needed to be able to keep six lanes of uh, traffic on the bridge at any one time. Mm. Seven. And the, well, during the construction when they had to shut the lane down. You know, so that's why you yeah, have it's metal barrier there. It's interesting it that gets moved yeah. every single back. It's interesting how six inches makes a whole lot of difference. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, see guys, I'm dealing with children tonight. You said it. Well, Laura, I, Laura's managing this. Is, is that an can. innuendo? Uh, yeah, well, you know Laura, if anyone comments on that, uh, kick them out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm with Jeff. I like this bridge quite a bit. Um, even though it, it doesn't have the architectural um, effects that other bridges in the area have that we've already looked at. You know, I, I enjoy this one quite a bit. That uh, blue crane or tower right next to it, that's for uh, offloading uh, and unloading ships. Well, that's the Packer Terminal, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's a number of those, uh, yeah. those right there. When the SS United States came up the Delaware River, it was initially docked right here mm. on the river before they moved it to the pier up river where it is now but that wasn't for a very long time I think that was just kind of to stick it somewhere because you know <laughs> the city of Philadelphia is going about their daily business and then they see a thousand foot ocean liner in the river and they're like oh shit where do we put this thing <laughs> um, and lastly on our bridge tour tonight the Commodore Barry Bridge is named for John Barry who was the who was a significant naval commander in the American Civil War. Um, he won the trust of General George Washington, who gave him the rank of Commodore after the American Revolution for his uh, valor in battle against the British. Um, Barry also recognized the need to create a separate division in the American Armed Forces in the 1780s dedicated to the Navy. So he was really one of the founders of what the branch of the branch of the, the our armed forces that became known as the U.S. Navy. This is a monstrous cantilever bridge. It reminds me a lot of those bridges that you will see on the Mississippi River. Yeah. Um, I, I was going to say you say largest. Define largest in this. Place. Well, I'm defining it by span length. Oh. Okay. So, so. So, despite what I know of Mississippi River bridges, this has a span length longer than all. It does. Wow. Now, you know, largest, I, I suppose, is a bit relative. Longest, longest um, thing. Yeah, but okay. the amount of steel used in this bridge is probably not more than the amount of steel used in the Crescent City Connection in New Orleans, for instance. I mean, that's a huge long bridge. Or any of those bridges down that way. I mean, they're all huge, but um, at least in this part of the country, there's nothing else quite like this one. Um and it still is top five for length. 
cantilever in the cantilever department. The old Gotham's Bridge would have been a companion, I suppose. Mm, I guess the outer bridge still is. Well, I mean, those bridges don't even approach the size of this one. No, but at least there, I mean, there's another steel bridge in the northeast. Well, yeah, the, but I'm, I'm talking about size, though. I mean, this is uh, none I, of those bridges compare in size to this one. That's the only other steel bridge that I can think of in the northeast that's remotely like this. Yeah. Again, this is another. If you have the chance to visit the Chester waterfront in Pennsylvania, you know you can get some really nice views of this bridge. Um, it's also a good place to take off a drone from, and you can get some really nice mm -hmm. shots of it as well. That's nice. That's um, a great picture right there. So, the possibilities are endless if you're willing to come out this way, whether you view these structures from ground level or from the air. There, there's something you had on that intro slide that mentioned part of an unbuilt freeway. Uh, it is a partially built freeway from 95 to 295, but if you, if you want to just touch on where that was going to go further. I, you're on a roll. You should keep going. Well, <laughs> I mean, it's, you're the one who has the, the maps in here, the unbuilt freeway. So as far as where it was going to go beyond 295, I think the longest that they were really looking at was the turnpike, but there was at least one point in history when it was proposed all the way through to connect to 55. Oh. See, I'm familiar with the 55 proposal. Okay, so you know you know the longest one. Then. Okay. Yeah. That's fair. But I, I think the idea was to... I don't, I don't think there was ever an idea of connecting it to the ACX, but... Um, no, I, I mean, it, only, it really only connects to 130. I said 295. I should have said 130. Yeah, I mean, but there, I mean, it's not too much farther to get to 295. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 130 the, was widened. I'm sorry, 322 was widened to 295, but they missed a good opportunity yeah. there. They put in traffic lights yeah, they rather did. than an interchange. Yeah, yeah they, they, they've given up that being a freeway. For sure. They have, but they could have made yeah. it a freeway to 295 for that. Not in the met modern day. They would have had to do it in the 60s or 70s to have a truck shot at it. Yeah. They don't think that way anymore. We've come to the end of our PowerPoint. Thank the Lord. Uh, if anybody has any questions pertaining to tonight's subject matter, the New Jersey suburbs, the bridges of the Delaware River, um, I will also, over the next period of time here, uh, address questions related to meet weekend. Also, if there's any leftover questions from our Philadelphia proper part of our PowerPoint slide series. I'll also entertain those as well. So really the floor is yours to uh, bring up anything that you want for the next interval. This two-part meet preview series has been brought to you by your friends on the AA Roads Forum uh, on the Roadway Wiz YouTube channel. Uh, we look forward to having all of you uh, descend upon Philadelphia <laughs> the weekend of August 20th and 21st. Uh, and and yours truly. People at a time. What's that? Up to 33 people at a time. Yes, please form an orderly line. <laughs> I, had, I had 34, so we have to limit this to yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, see, oh. see, he's keeping track of the high score yeah, over there. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's yeah. personal. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a competition, but he's working. Well, how <laughs> many did he have in Delaware? Well, it was 31 or 32. It was 32, I think. Yeah, that's the closest anyone's come. Uh, yeah. So we'll see. You said, you said 34 is the high score? Baltimore in 2010. See, that's a 12-year-old record. I mean, yeah. It's about time somebody did better than no, that. No, no. No one's <laughs> um, But, yeah, we're looking forward to seeing everybody in town uh, that weekend. Um, and these videos were put together for really to give you guys an introduction or a refresher course if necessary to kind of help you get your bearings on what you can expect to see this weekend, this meet weekend. It was my pleasure to put them together for you. Hooray! Yeah, but now we get to the videos. Now we get to... Yeah. It's hardly the end of the presentation. I didn't hear a harump. Okay. Well, I'll show you some stuff in this episode that is kind of New Jersey and Pennsylvania related. 
I like one of those. It's exhilarating to build in your own business. You know, I, your own I've always so thought of you as a franchise. Jump. Dot com and click <laughs> start a franchise at the top of the page. We've got exciting news to share with you. Click start the franchise at 1-800-GOT-JUMP.COM. Very few things are impossible. I have something that's impossible. Okay, tell it. Having a big event and not creating a pile of junk. Okay, but it's easily fixable. Oh, I get it. All I have to do is point. All you have to do is point. Some of the are tired of dealing with the old windows and doors in your house? Well, maybe it's time you finally go guide up. The great people at Guide a Door and Window, they're going to help make your window and door replacement project more affordable with their buy one, get one half off sale. For every door or window you buy, you get a second one at 50% off. And you can mix and match the savings. Buy an entry door, get half off a store door. Buy a patio door, get 50% off a window. If you need to replace all the windows and doors in your house, you'll save 50% on half your project. The more you need, the more you save. Plus, Guide is making it easier for you to afford your project with no money down and interest-free financing for up to 18 months. Act now. Offers for a limited time only. Restrictions apply for full details. Call Guida today or schedule a free. No obligation in-home estimate at 1-877-GO-GUIDA or visit them at goguida.com. That's go, G-U-I-D-A.com. Well, for the most part, it's because of the afternoon and high in the mid-60s. Right now it is 6 degrees. Melanie Armstrong has your top stories coming up news. And two free windows with every two that you buy and pay nothing for the next few years. And There's still cash. cash. KYW News Time, 1 o'clock. Live from Odyssey Headquarters, high up on the school corner. All news and all that matters to you. Well, there was a horrible crash in all the cash. In D.C., police say a man suspected of shooting at people from his apartment near a university campus has been found dead. Russian forces are trying to steal plant, but it's the latest. I thought, uh, 80 still takes cash. I was yeah. across it not that long ago. I just like the big signs on the DERPA bridges that say, cash! Yeah. You know, like, yeah, so, cash me outside, how about that? So they don't do mixed mood lanes here. They're still either cash only or easy pass only. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I, usually if you take easy pass into a cash lane, they let you through, but... Then again, most agencies, there's an exit right after the toll plaza, and that's why, so. Right. It could be different here. This would be the first time I've ever seen the Betsy Ross Bridge westbound. It's exciting. Mm-hmm. So this Gee, I wonder why that is. is. <laughs> <laughs> so this was eight lanes wide, and then they put yes. the uh, concrete barrier in there. Barrier and shoulders. Mm -hmm. It must be painful at 35. No one goes 35. I mean, this is Usually Philadelphia. Do you think people go 35? No. Yeah. I've definitely got at least twice that here, so don't worry. That car might be going 35. Pennsylvania plate, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> that. They're that. probably lost. Yeah, so. Here's that well, nice long. Two minutes, please. Get flash 25. The nice thing about this bridge is you could close that lane forever and you're never going to run into a delay. Mm. You know, you, prob <laughs> you probably could, right? As I said, Tacony Palmyra sees more traffic than Betsy Ross despite being an older, smaller bridge. Yeah. Everyone, everyone wants that one. There, I think, I think yeah. part of the purpose of redoing the whole interchange on the Pennsylvania side here is to give them enough local access to try to offset that. Mm. I Ooh. did see that. Yeah. Over a like, humper day. They were just like over there, like the place in the yard, <laughs> 35. Oh, Apparently, wow. it was yes. a yes. some yes. casino. Yes. I don't know. Oop, you I crossed it. Oh. 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 oh! That's a quality New York drive. No, the one time I ever tried to come back to I'm New Jersey in home. this area, but I at least three, if not four, different um, directions of streets were all feeding into 73 yeah. very slowly. For, for no one's using the Betsy Ross. Everyone's feeding into 73. Where they had it 
and uh, basing this on experience, I'm not just speaking. Uh-huh. And they had it like shipped in This was done some time ago, because now the ramps are all open. Well, well, those, well, well, those two are closed. Right now? <laughs> yeah. I thought, I thought they had reopened all but the final ramp. No. <laughs> yeah, those are closed still. Uh, so this represents the current configuration, so. This is a very new... And actually, on meet weekend, we very well might see this. Hint, hint. So. I sincerely hope we do. Yeah. And that massive I've been on this far without it. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. this is the new direct yeah. ramp to get you to Air Mango. Look at that nice three lanes that you're never going to get used. I know, you could literally utilize all three lanes and not hold anyone up. Yeah, well, you sure could. And that would also help to keep your speed up going on the turn as well. I was on a relatively underutilized freeway today in the right lane taking photos of button copy and just had my blinkers on. It was like, this isn't going to bother me. <laughs> it didn't. Did you well, no, you have, you have jersey day. plates. Nobody thought anything on it. Oh, we am going to take my back. All right, so I'll show you 95. Oh. Um... I showed you this last time, but I really want to show it again because I really like what they did with this uh, replacement viaduct here. And also you get a pretty nice view of Center City. Um, yeah, you have to deal with so many Pennsylvania drivers. Well, that, that, that does make it a challenge, yeah. Being that it's a PennDOT project, they actually did a good job of this. If this is the one I think it is, my old firm designed this one. I don't think I've ever heard some no, of yeah, the same sense. Yeah, it, it doesn't happen to all. <laughs> I, I can't recall it one time. This is actually, has this been under construction longer than the, than the direct connection? Mm. I feel like 95 has been going on long construction time. for... Well, there's, there's been something happening Well, here. they do just a few miles at a time. Exactly. So it's gonna be yeah, they're constantly doing it instead yeah. of just do it all at once get it over with. PennDOT can't afford that. So That's probably. our PennDOT, yep. <laughs> yeah, because they're, they're paying the Turnpike Commission, right? Oh, no, no, vice versa. Well, no, it's the other Turnpike Commission is paying PennDOT yeah. for transit subsidies, but... But PennDOT has too many four-digit routes. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Well, now, PennDOT did spend billions of dollars replacing busted-up bridges on those four-digit routes all around, you know, about 500 bridges. Mm-hmm. Mm. And now everybody thinks that, oh, well, those, all that work's done so we can lower the gas tax. No. <laughs> because uh, all the money to repair those, that big, only, that big increase only paid a small, that was like a down payment. But just like Act 44, the debt from the bridge, those, those, that massive bridge reconstruction project is going to be around for years to come. Now, is the north end of third PA32 back to one leaning toy, or is it still southbound only? You're asking the wrong person that. The, that that's one that's been... Closed for so long, I'm starting to think it's permanent. PA 32 at the, the north end, there's some erosion up the northbound lane, so they just made it southbound only. Sounds and like a good PennDOT solution. As far as I know, they've never finished <laughs> it. <there. laughs> um, yeah, the last I heard that was still one lane. Yeah, exactly. But I don't. I'm not they didn't bother to put out a traffic light and you know, make it bi directional. See, but no. I thought that that's what they did. But even no, even West not. Virginia, I found, had one of those on <laughs> one of their projects on going across the mountains. They had a, they had traffic lights. Yeah, they ran out of traffic lights. In, in, in West Virginia, right. probably not. Well, in Pennsylvania. Well, in Pennsylvania, that. that's possible. <laughs> not West Virginia. Oh my God. Here we go, Andrew, the Ben Franklin here. Yep. This is the Penn's Landing section of 95, yep. which was built in the late 70s. Yep. I think it was fully online by 1979. And they're talking about putting a deck over the over the Delaware Expressway over this part of, over this freeway. I don't know if they're going to, but it's been discussed. Yeah, I, I think they want to extend the cap that already exists. Right here. Right. Come on. Yeah. Like they want to connect the two caps. I think. Yeah, my friend uh, Sandy, yeah. Sandy Spring Sandy Smith has talked about that. Not Sandy Spring. I mean, for a quarter of the year, he is. Well, Sandy Smith knows everything about everything Philadelphia. We're going to try to get him to come to the meet. He'd be a good asset for that. 
Yeah, I think. Yeah. I think he should, but only if we only have the two people around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to turn people away. You know, that's sorry, Sandy. Uh, <laughs> Sandy, Sandy's great. He, yeah. he, you know, well, doesn't he? He lives in the area. Doesn't yeah, he, he lives in, Ger in the Germantown area of Philly. Last, last yeah. time, last time I, went, I went. I'm looking house. at this right now, and this is showing traffic on both directions of 32. So I'm thinking they actually did restore it. To Two direction traffic again. So uh, they did actually fix quite a bit then. Okay. Well, there you go. I, I am favorably impressed by that one. I think that PennDOT has said recently that by the time they're done rebuilding so the Sunday, all the South it. Philly areas, yeah, like this area here, yeah. that they're going to go back to the yeah, beginning and, he, and restart again. He, he, yeah, probably a good idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. probably. Right. <laughs> so it, it, the, the reconstruction yeah, train will never end, room. apparently. Well, it would be also nice they would widen it from, uh, so, from I guess, from, the, from 476 yeah. down to the Delaware border. Or almost Delaware Well, border. that's not part of this Huge. program. No, I understand that. Yeah. Although that definitely needs something. Oh, yeah, it does. Yeah. Um, I think that PennDOT has projects related to 95 through Philly scheduled through the 2030s. I think you're right. And then by that point, it'll be roughly 40 years since they started. Yeah, that's so, right. You know, they'll have to go back up to the top at Academy Road and start over again. Well, they also... They also no, that the, Other than the, the stuff they've been doing lately has only been the last 15 years or so. So my I think it goes back further. Well, uh, some of that stuff goes back a lot further. Yeah, I think there, for the first 10 or so years that I was like able around, to drive, there was not construction on 95. Okay. Yeah, so if like they did yeah, early yeah. stuff, okay. there was a period um, when they were doing nothing. Like, uh, like the area around Academy yeah, Road was around 2000, um, I think. In well, I like that guy. Paul that guy. Yeah, that's exactly what I would have done there, too. Yeah. And this is the Walt Whitman, right? The only difference is I would have been using signals. I would have just cut right across. Like that guy did. We're following him now. So. I actually yeah. interviewed for a job with Amtrak. Oh, really? Oh, okay. So. Which I did not get and did not want. <laughs> but, uh, what, what didn't you like about Amtrak? Um, you don't mind me asking. While we're on the record. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was like the one job interview I've been to that I walked out of it like, I hope I don't get this job. Oh, okay. Uh, because okay. it's just, they... And now 15 just, other people know. The, the people I interviewed with, I mean, this was like 10 years ago. Oh. Um, <laughs> the people I interviewed with there just no not an ounce of humor in their souls or anything. They just were just so just like, mm, and just grumpy the whole time. Wow. And asked all the standard interview questions of like mm -hmm. a time that you overcame adversity and problem solving. Mm. And all this yeah, stuff. when I yeah, sat that, through this like interview, hour of that, that was overcoming like, adversity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> be a great answer. <laughs> that is a good answer. Yeah, I like that. And I just that whole interview, and I just I left that like, holy crap! I don't want to work here. This so again, really that two uh, overpasses go there. That there may be some construction going on that during the uh, the meet as well. well Not yeah, sure of the timing there. Yeah, there's a overpass there that's in really bad shape. In fact, this, this they moved day. up the uh, project. Uh, well, not here on the 676. No, this next exit has those signs that we opened the presentation with. Yeah, if you take the exit one loop yep. ramp there, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. I, went, I went back there and could not find the, the camera case. So. <laughs> <laughs> Buddy of mine, it works. So it it might still be there, you never know. Not part of you don't think so? You're more likely to get shot. I think we should send you back there to find out if that's true or not. I have heard. You work in MBTA. I was a conductor. You were a conductor. Okay. All right. I know who Akilos is. So I got mad at my old engineering firm back in January and quit. Oh. What I did before I came to VHP now is I actually was a conductor on the uh, MBTA computer realm. No shit. Oh, yeah. Wow. Look at you. What, what were your hours for that? <laughs> you know, I'm just curious. <laughs> the, the job that I held the week I quit, yeah. I worked um, Monday, Thursday, and Friday, um, 4 a.m. to 10 a.m., Right. and then Saturday and Sunday, 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. Wow. wow. Yeah. Wow. And you did it all with a smile. No, I, that's, that's <laughs> part of why I didn't give two weeks' notice, so I wouldn't have to work that weekend. Because <laughs> uh. <laughs> it, it was not only was it like 5 a.m. to 5 p.m., but it was a 5 a.m. sign up in Rockport. 
Which is probably nice. way the fuck away from you. It's the farthest point on the north side from me. Oh, oh. wow. Yeah, well, that's... Is that a two hour trip for you? Not quite two hours. Not quite. <laughs> wow. It's like an hour and a half. Oh my god. So there's, you, a, there's your new train right there. And you can pack up. So yeah. did you, uh, you did you have any refusals to pay the fare when you were working there? Oh yeah. Yeah. That, um, that's part of the job, huh? Yeah, I um, cannot talk on the record about um, handling that. Okay, that's fine. Well, you're not on the record. <laughs> this is being recorded. I'm not talking about it. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. That's fine. You're, you're like me in the turnpike, aren't you? Okay. <laughs> I mean, I don't still work there, but I don't want to. No, that's. Fine. I don't want to give people ideas. No, that's good. That's good. You're giving me ideas to not pay the fare. That's all. Well, you, we'll you, we'll, you, we'll you, talk you, later. <laughs> yeah, I, I will say on we'll the talk record that fare yeah, yeah, evasion on the Washington Metro has basically been legalized, so you can. Uh, of there. all the times I've been on the New Jersey light rail, only once has my ticket ever... No, zero times has my ticket ever been checked, but once I saw someone else being carted out to pay the $100 fine. Oh, nice. So yeah. when I clinched HBLR, I, I knew it was proof of payment, and I bought a ticket at the machine, but I didn't realize you then had to go to a second machine and have a stamp. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Until the very last leg that I rode, I, I took it out to like Tonnelly Ave or something, and then I just got off and was waiting to take it back in. And I noticed a couple of people walk up and, and get their ticket stamped, and I'm like, oh, yeah, was, oops. <laughs> and I just went and did it. Yeah. Well, if you're ever uncertain, hundred dollar stamp, stamp it on the back <laughs> the first time. And if no one ever checks it, stamp it on the front the second time. Hey. There you go. Obviously, I didn't no one ever checked. On the record that you never heard that. Of course. We're, of course. we're watching a video of the entire length of Interstate 676. Yes, from the good side to the bad side. It's interesting, too, that HBLR is... Well, actually, no, that's, that's false. We're not seeing that. This is not all of 676, because 676 ends at the state line and picks up at the 95 interchange. Well, it depends on. So we talked about this last time, yeah. and th that depends on which agency or which jurisdiction you believe. Right. So I think PennDOT has one idea, and Federal Highway has another one. So I go Federal Highway in that case. Federal Highway considers the entire bridge to be I six seventy six. So if FHWA routes six seventy six through the intersections, whereas PennDOT and New Jersey each. Well, New I mean, New Jersey's consistent either way, but... PennDOT considers the ramps to 95 to be 676. Now that, Federal Highway considers... Now that we've discussed this, I am changing my preconceived notion, and I will... Because I, I would always agree with whoever's not PennDOT, so, okay. It falls the bridge. <laughs> Real quick before we run out, so the Ben Franklin Bridge still has these arches with the lights on them. They mm -hmm. haven't switched to arrows or no. anything like that. The RPA has kept that classical look. On the for that. Yeah, yeah. Then you could just stick a lens with an arrow in that same housing. Right here, all you have to do is make a flyover. Yeah. And you don't have to deal with the intersections at all. Yeah. Don't know why they don't just do a flyover. Because they like the breeze would look. <laughs> you won't be able to do that. after all. And you, have, and you have the panhandlers there, too. Yeah. And you know, we wouldn't want to make it easier on people yeah, driving in the city. Go. Right. I appreciate the New Jersey license plate, too. Yeah. I appreciate you handing money to this person off camera. You know what? I, I don't mean to make light of this and the, the whole panhandling thing, but the city of Philadelphia should put up another toll booth at that intersection and just let the panhandlers run it. <laughs> I mean, you I sound the, very 1980s well, New York. Now. Well, isn't isn't that one of the more popular hangouts for panhandlers? They're there twenty four seven. Yeah, there's always a wow. crowd of people there. Yeah. Wow. When every, I was a every kid, every city has those spots. When I was a kid, you'd come well, into the shooting button in Baltimore and, at the north end of I three ninety five the yeah. other day. I think it was fatal, actually. I mean, it's Baltimore. Is this oh, Baltimore? that's true. Murders are the part of their business. So that's true. So, so this right lane here, that was an add-on to the Mine Street, Street Expressway here. That wasn't there at first. That was a shoulder, I imagine. Right, and yeah. then they finally uh, repainted it yeah. to be an actual lane. Yeah. You can see where the concrete says you have two lanes with the shoulder, and they squeezed everything to fit a third lane. Right? Yeah. Now it's 611. Yeah, this is a road I have only clinched on a bus. Okay. Well, well, Until right. August. Yes. Uh -huh. I am planning on going. All right, there you go. Of course you are. See? 
I mean, gonna, you're gonna have to start turning away people really quick, Steve. I, I know how to injure people, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> These overpasses here uh, fill your place recently. There used to be, you can see it a little bit, uh, um, pillars in the median. Oh. They took them out and made them right wow. completely across the highway here. Impressive. Consider, when did they actually open 676 here? The final opening of it was 1991. Wow. Then um, that's the section east of Broad Street. So right. This section here was, I think the bridge over the Schuylkill River was built in the late 50s. Looks like it. But it didn't get past Broad until 1990. Yeah, because that, that was supposed to be 76, and they ended up switching it to 676 because of how difficult it was to get that built. That's right, yep. Mm. And so now Camden doesn't have a two-digit interstate to call its own. No, unfortunately. And that is why Camden is in the dumps. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's all I'm sure. I'm, yeah, I'm sure that's the that reason. The yep. sole reason, yes. Yes. Yep. Uh, anything you can blame on, look at that New York car gun system. Anything you could blame wow. on pinned up. Why look look at that nice sure kill expressway pavement there. Yeah, right. Speaking of which, let's take you on a drive along I-76. Nice segue there. Yeah. 42. That was very well timed. Oh, well, we'll what is intended? What is intended? I wonder what's under construction here. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, we're not even on 76. Look at that. Well, where's the official beginning of 76 in New Jersey? Is yeah, it right here? Well, at well, right underneath the Browning Road overpass. Okay. So even though the exits are numbered 1A, 1B, technically this is still considered 42. Steve, I yeah. owe you an apology. You were right. The ramp from 42 North to 295 South will be exit 14. Yeah. I said it was going to be exit 1A as part of uh, I-76's exit. Really? 14, well, 14 is the Creek Road injury. So they're yeah. doing 14A, 14B, or what? Or are they doing a 14 and just splitting the ramp to have one local and one? Maybe. Okay. I, I forget what the final configuration looks like, but that... that we still have 11 years to figure it out. Yeah. No, this is the no, missing moves. Move ramps. This is the missing moves. This, this, this one will actually roughly be yeah, built that's on a, schedule. That's a year, yeah. year and three. This, <laughs> should, this should be in place by the time our meet happens. <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah. The way it's going. Well. There are two types of projects in New Jersey. There's the ones that take 25 years to build, and there's the ones that take two and a half months to open. <laughs> Well, that, uh, both of them here. So, I mean, the Turnpike Authority has never had a pro ever had a project go as long as Missy Moose has it ever. Well, Direct Connect, you mean? Yes, I'm sorry. Um, well, the Whitpen Bridge went on for almost a decade. I'm sorry, that's not one Turnpike Authority or what? Uh, well, that's. Well, I'm trying to think of other projects that. Well, Whitpen also moved consistently. It's just there were a lot of components to it. That's not it, well, it was it was just consistently slow. No, it wasn't slow. It, I, it, uh, honestly, it took that long to move that many pieces around for a different issue. Yeah. That one did not move slowly. This it overpass not, right here is going to be the one we placed uh, uh, soon. Mm -hmm. Well, these are all late fifties overpasses. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think they've really been touched much I mean, since then. You well, it make, looks like or it's 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 yeah, and then you look at the pavement and you're like, yeah, well. I guess, well, this I also had the express local in configuration too. Oh, yeah, going, going. I remember as a kid. I remember that. Yeah. yeah I, got, I, I was looking at the turnpike, but I guess in terms of actual construction, they have not had anything. You know, the, the six to nine widening would be the longest recent project that they had. That sure as hell didn't take eleven years. It took it took many years. To yes, be, but absolutely took a, a number of years. I think oh. Seven or so to fourteen. I, mean, I thought they got it run incredibly fast for how much work it was. It took it took well, it took a lot of work. Some of their stuff take like you think about the northern section from forty six to eighty took fifteen plus years to get it done, but the actual construction period was short. It just took a while for them to get it through approvals. Exactly. Well, that that that. I, but the actual construction time is relatively straightforward. I mean, the ICC out of my way was. You know, it was 60 years of arguing, and, and Melinda Peters got the thing built in like four years. Where's the bridge into Virginia? Well, that wasn't <laughs> part of it, I would like to say that that's going to be built, but. There's, it's supposed yeah, to connect to Virginia 28. Where is that? Oh, uh, well, it's not. It's I believe the, you mean I 366? 
I, uh, I, I, uh, actually, it's 60, not 65 60. miles an hour. What do you mean? But it should be. Well, the, 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 it's not on any master plans in Maryland, so it's not happening yeah. any time soon. And the, the, the Hag Preserve activists are there to get very upset about that. I mean, that's their business is being upset. They like that. They're, good. They're very good at that. Mm -hmm. And note that I said Hag with an age to honor the nasty women that are involved in that, of which there are many. Gender people? No, just obnoxious people. It's not gender, it's obnoxious. It so happens that they're all female. Yeah, you don't know how to identify it. Uh, but I, and I don't want to know. Yeah. This is the nice thing about living and working in New Hampshire. You don't really have issues like that. I believe that. <laughs> you live yeah, and die. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I was explaining. I was explaining to a relative of mine in Sweden about about. Uh, uh, that New Hampshire is one of the very few places where people can ride motorcycle helmets with little motorcycle with no helmet. And There's a lot of states that don't require a motorcycle oh, helmet. There's a lot of states that don't enforce the requirement. Yeah. But, well, that, but, but there are a decent number that don't require it. But New Hampshire right. actually actually forfeits some of its safety federal safety money yeah. to not. That, well, the, the big the, thing there well, is seatbelts. Yeah, they're the only state that doesn't have seatbelts. Okay, I'll start yeah. that. Okay. But Common I, sense for all. And then, then and I was then I was mandatory for little. Well, then I then I was explaining to him that. Every New Hampshire tag, and he's not, I don't think he's ever visited the United States, so been, that every New Hampshire tag has the words live free or die on it. Although so, there is a Supreme Court case saying you're allowed to cover up those words if you want. Oh, I thought that I, the, the Jehovah's Witnesses uh, lost a case on that because they said that live free or die was against their religion. Uh, I think it was actually Quakers and they won the case. There, was, been there was Jehovah's Witnesses that was involved in some New Hampshire case with, the, uh, with license plates. Yeah, that's beautiful. Some new yeah. APLs for those yeah. that. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Monotubes oh. come to South Philly. It is so interesting seeing DERPA have signs that match MUTCD standards. I'm not used to that. <laughs> yeah, these these actually came out pretty good. Must they, have been the new intern that knew what he was talking it about. Mu it must <laughs> have been my company <laughs> advising them. That's all I can think of. Yeah, I doubt that. I don't. I don't <laughs> doubt it. They would be out of our Pennsylvania office, so I would never have seen it myself, so I have no way to say Where it. Is where is NT HNTV's Pennsylvania office? We have one in Philly. It was Jehovah's Witnesses, but they did win the case. Okay. <laughs> Monty yeah, Python quote comes okay, to mind. Yeah, I'll, I'll give those people something to witness. Well, I'm not exactly a fan of this, but uh, yeah, let's just leave I, it at I that. I do love that the Penrose ad is another good was choice. Was a Jehovah's Witness actually spent it 15 another days in jail? Yeah. Because he covered up the slogan. The more I think about it, the more trust bridges I come up with in the Northeast. Like the, the Sagamore and Bourne bridges are trust bridges, I believe. Aren't their days numbered? Yes. Uh, they they keep, they've been saying that for the last 20 years. Okay. It's, so. it's in design right now. Yeah, but it's, they've been saying that for the last It time. hasn't been in design for the last 20 years. Yes, it has. No, it hasn't. There have been designs <laughs> fully done <laughs> that have then been canceled. Conceptual, yes. No. Engineering, no. No, design. Final design. Say so. It has. Also, we're involved with, with it. So. Of course you are. We were talking about the RPA jurisdiction, so it goes underneath the server pass okay. right up until you meet. Uh, pass right in, Yeah, pass you. Pass yeah. Until you meet, quote unquote, the Scoogle. This is all the uh, Walt Whitman Express okay. right here. Wow. That is, that is yep. interesting. The Port Authority has some interesting jurisdictional limits. That's the one I'm most familiar with. George Washington, the handover to Fletcher Avenue. Um, Fletcher Lincoln Avenue on the Lincoln Jersey? Tunnel, the, the handover is right at the top of the helix structure. Okay. Oh. And mm -hmm. So Port Authority controls the helix structure yes. itself. Yes. Okay. At the very end of the structure is right when they hand it to DO2. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So if you look at an aerial photo, you'll see exactly where that line is. Hmm. Holland, they don't have much of anything. They just have a traffic light. Um, yeah, just pick a traffic light, you know. Well, now, how far... I've heard various stories about how far does Port Authority extend on 95 into New York? Or is it signed somewhere? I would assume they extend to the far side of Manhattan, and that's it. Look at that okay. time sign. That's some pretty good time right If you think of the 1A, yeah. 1B, 1C being signed yeah. at the same time as exits 1, 2, or 3 for the same interchanges, on that in the last that couple weeks, based yeah. on where those were signed, yeah. that tells you who owns so, what. Okay. But yeah, I think, I think it's when you come out from under the 
Well, over that's the you have under the buildings that. and yeah. the, the roadways under, come together, I, I think that's the way it goes. Okay. Being displayed is normal or you can also think about it in, in the old days before they built the Hamilton Bridge. George Washington went to the 178th, 179th tunnels. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. Those right. would have been port so, so That you tells you the limits of jurisdiction to follow that okay. Okay. on one line. And those are still there. They're there's there's the blocked off, right? Yes. Waypoint yeah. mileage time. I think Steve Anderson was talking about that not a long time ago. Yeah, I, I've been down the old lands to see what I can see. Uh, is it, I take it you cannot get into the tunnels. It's, it's effectively... Yeah. It's the the, the eastbound yeah. tunnel is still there, but just garage door. The okay. westbound tunnel is pretty much obliterated at this point. Okay. Hmm. That building right there, I believe, is uh, taller than uh, City Hall, by the way. Uh -huh. That's in the uh, University City. Uh, yeah, they, they, they now allow this. <laughs> You right, but most people know it in the center city area. The university city area has also built some skyscrapers yeah. yeah. taller than that. You can do whatever you want, man. Just like Boston. Yeah, this has become kind of like a second center city. Boston, you have their city hall up on a hill, and it used to be that was the tallest point that you wanted. City on a hill. And that one to the right what? there with that finger sticking up, the, the middle finger. Yeah, that's nice. The, uh, yeah, right. That's, like a city that's the tallest <laughs> Steve, Boston has never had a height restriction related to City Hall. Not in modern times, but historically, I thought they did. One remember. place where you cannot build that high is in. Are we walking on that to the right there? Well, that's that, true uh, too. Yeah. That uh. But Arlington, you walk, can. Walkway? I believe so. Right. Pico. Yeah. <coughs> huh? We're walking on the walkway. Over the Schuylkill. Yeah, the Schuylkill Banks Trail is on the opposite side of the river. Uh, same general area yeah, that we're that passing through rural. now, but. Uh, it would be on the opposite. I love bank. these signs. Why can't we just walk this through? <laughs> yeah, I, I I welcome you to I mean, do that yourself. If well, you'd we like, might be able to keep you know? up with traffic if we do. I call I call, even call the cops on a guy walking <laughs> on the throughway today. Uh, Amish guy. Like we might actually pass people actually while we were walking. <laughs> well, that's a possibility. That's on eighty four on a Saturday in August. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, there was one point when I could have jogged between interchanges faster than I did. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. Where's the art museum to the right there? Well, this may if, if this if it could if things continue to be as severe as we've been experiencing this summer, I think eventually that heat's going to get transmitted to politicians, and maybe they can't widen anything ever. Ethos may come to an end, or ideology is really more what it is. Mm. Politics. Politics, yes, sir. Wait, politics come to an end? Yeah, no, not I'm politics. All just I'm just all for that. No, just the anti, <laughs> just the anti road and anti auto, and the other thing actually that may spell the death of a lot of the anti auto vanguard is uh, is, is the electric cars, because the one compelling issue that they have now against cars, oh, it's air quality. Well, if the cars are electric, I mean, yes, you have to worry about where the power is generated. Yes. But, but and, and how the cars are manufactured. Well, yeah, and but the deleterious effect of Elon Musk on. Well, that's all true, but uh, but I, I don't know how much that's actually going to gain traction. Now. I I would argue for it. I don't want to ever have to drive an electric car if I can help it. I don't want an electric car either. Yeah. Uh, Based uh, on the way people drive Teslas right now, I never want electric cars to be any more popular than currently. Well, you keep in mind that the, the 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 group of people that are driving the Teslas now, a lot of them are horrible, horrible drivers. Or they have that damn autopilot. Minus a lot plus all. Okay. Well, and then they have that autopilot, which is a killer feature. I mean, literally a killer feature. Oh, yeah. Should not be allowed. I no, mean, it's, it's fun to try to make them kill themselves. Well, NHTSA, NHTSA should, should basically tell Tesla, remove that from all the cars you sold. Because it's not ready for prime time. Have you, have you seen all the Terminator movies? It's essentially, at some point, flick, flick a switch and Tesla will take over the world. Yeah, well, that could be. That's a possibility. Like that. Well, I feel like NHTSA is going to do something to Tesla because they, are. Cause they have been investigating them. So yeah, I mean, we deal we deal with with uh, uh, with uh, connected autonomous vehicles at work, and there's, there's <coughs> I mean, I know that there have been cra a lot of the states are getting very angry, and what really pissed the states off is Tesla's crashing into a freeway uh, service uh, patrol, uh -huh. uh, the DOT and fire <laughs> EMS responders. You see the nonsense I deal with on a regular basis. Yeah. Really yeah, you know. yeah. yeah, for good reason. It costs them money and hassle and injures their people and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm at the end of what I was going to present. Do you guys this have any great. final uh, great job. comments, There's questions, comment. anything, anything you guys <coughs> want to address before we sign off? Philly sucks. Yeah, you're on the air, talking to the microphone, will you? Philly sucks! Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm sure that's a real. No, this was an awesome presentation. Yeah. 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 Sandy Smith on your presentation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Us New Jersey residents really appreciate nice it. Hope you're you appreciate our side mm-hmm. commentary. Yeah. There. I have, I have yeah, you know, I managed to navigate it, yeah, so he's free. it was all good. I have a lot of affection. Um, and you said you weren't going to have any. There's still more. Enjoy. Yeah. Okay. So. Sandy, that's the hardest. Oh, so, so you're thank you because it's there. We're gonna. If it's free, it's free. Yeah, we're gonna sign off. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. Look forward to seeing you guys in Philadelphia next month, All August right. 20th and 21st. Um, should be a fun weekend. Yep. You know, yeah. Looking forward should to seeing be. all yes. of you. I'm going to be there for part of it, so only the rest of it will be fun. Well, that's that's right. We <laughs> have to have part of it. Yeah. Can't take you anywhere. So this guy, if have, have you have you broadcast what you're planning on doing that weekend? Yeah. Should I tell people for you? No. You don't want me to no. spoil. Um, so you don't want me to spoil the ridiculousness. Not right right okay. Okay. Secret surprise. All right. Well, I'll, I'm going to sign off so that I can actually tell people. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night. Everybody. See you. See you in Philly next month. Adios. Thanks, Laura. Not too many straight guys do that. I said, well, that's the new policy.